Button hit. Button. Oh, yeah. Remember, don't bring up D Batch breaking his mic. Hey, hey uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I want, I want to, we're live, okay? I got to thank everybody for, for joining us. We got a couple hundred people waiting on us here, and we appreciate you. Thanks for waiting. D Batch uh, done messed up his microphone, and, and, uh, <laughs> so did ever, so, so did I. So it's not D's fault. So, uh, yeah, if you're here, guys, hit the like button, help us out a little bit. Maybe, uh, tell a buddy or two about the show, Real Do Xbox podcast, every single week. Feel free to clip it and take parts you want and create narratives out of it. We love that. Also, we have a fantastic Ooh. panel. We've got some great topics. And uh, I cannot wait for some of these topics. So we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. D-Batch, another week, another show, buddy. Yeah, man, I'm excited. It's a good week. I got my Steam Deck confirmed. It's on its way. And we got some fire topics tonight. And I'm going to rip some people some new ones tonight. I can't <laughs> wait. That's hot. Hey, D-Badge, oh. go ahead and turn yourself down to Discord 10 more percent, and I can raise you on my end. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to get rid of the clipping, chat. You know me. Also, uh, we got Forte filling in for Fonzarelli. Fonzarelli is in the middle of moving around and, and uh, relocating and doing some stuff there. So, obviously, we'll keep you updated on Fonz. We don't know how many episodes if he'll miss or if he'll miss any more, but he will definitely be back. Uh, our thoughts go out to Fonzarelli, but Forte's here in the meantime. Uh, off the bench, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, man, I'm good, man. You know, one F has to replace another F in the time of need. My boy <laughs> Fonzarelli, we're going to miss you, brother. Take care of yourself and make sure you get all that together, and the seat will be nice and warm for you when you come back. Don't smell me. the seat when you come back, though, Fonz. Yeah, please don't, because I farted in it. Like, <laughs> don't pull Jesus Don't pull an obi one. Anyway, don't pull an obi one. Hey, uh, we've also got x right. Tim Dog, OG, Mr. 60K on Twitter. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, happy to be here. We got a good show. We got a, uh, a lot of good topics. Uh, and shout out to my uh, co-worker, Dave, with his technical prowess, who got me out of work early so I could do the show. Shout out to you. I know you're listening in. And uh, yeah, let's get going. Damn, right. Dave. Shit. You got to hook us up with Dave Dave's phone number so we can send him weird things. Hey, Zalker, how you been, buddy? <laughs> good. I want to save. I want to send Dave weird things now. I don't know why, but I just feel like this overwhelming thing to send him weird things like <laughs> buying bungee for four billion dollars i feel like that's a weird thing i don't know why i just feel like you know one ip and that's it that's i feel good about it you know whatever hey but here the topics are gonna be great this week. yeah yeah we got, we got some real good topics uh we've also got an yeah. amazing chat we've got almost 500 people already here guys hit the like button tell a buddy too about the show we're getting into some topics soccer before you know normally I'm, we got a, a few extra super chats bastard normal and if you could please knock some of these out i'm gonna get the uh patron shout outs ready and uh, again, shout out to everybody watching the show. Yep. Yeah, we got Outbreak Podcast. He's a dealer. Thanks for the awesome interview. You rock. Thank you I very much. An interview. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, we you. have uh, Corky McCork. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking great name. He said, Corky I'm from, I'm from a, Scotland. Is it from fucking Scotland? Mm. Tell hi to William Wallace. <laughs> I think that's Scotland, right? Yeah. Uh, so we got Face 23. Uh, he says, PS5 VRR is the same as the Xbox and the PC. The only difference that's limitation is PlayStation 5 doesn't support LFC, low frame rate compensation, on a system level, which Sony can implement. So, looky there. I mean, Face Brooklyn, Face Brooklyn, shout out to you, buddy, because you just confirmed part of what we were speculating last week. Anybody who actually watched the show last week know that we were talking about how this is awesome that they're getting this, right? It's cool it's finally implemented, but there's, there's definitely something different with it, right? And... While uh, we, we got all the specifics there, Brooklyn, we're going to definitely get into that. There's a lot you left out, but um, yeah, ultimately that's going to be a fun topic, and we'll be discussing um, some idiots. Oh, uh, yeah, but we got some Boba good. Fett. We got Boba Fett gaming. He says, "Tell me why." I don't know why. <laughs> Stupid. I just had to sing it like that because I hate myself. Because we were uh, in the party at 4 a.m. singing "Tell Me Why." That's why. Shout out to him and, and uh, Red Panda and uh, and uh, Dungeon, Don't start singing it. What? I want it that way. I want. You see how I said boyfriend danger? And hey, uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and give some shout outs, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into the first topic. We got Dub Mobile, we got Ruben Almighty, Dave Incubus, Ricky Palon, Fault Lines, Not Sly Like Bad Boy Live Achievement, Nano Polymath, shout out to him, Zordon Costanza, KY Bob Goose 8402, Strike, Elite Possess, and Lupa for an object, Gap Quiz Tail. John Blue, Vec Boss, Diva X, Real Dead, Neil, Suicide King, Tasteless Genie, Michael Bowen, Guillermo Cavill, All Might, Dark CMF, and Alfonso Hogan. Shout out to the patron shout out tier. And uh, all patrons should be in the scroll above. If you're not, please let me know on Xbox Live, I, I space, dealer space, I, I. That's the best place to get a hold of me. 
as we do move into the damn topics. Again, shout out to everyone that supports the show uh, and all that good stuff. We got a some, some pretty good. We got a really good topic to begin with because we we had some fun with this last week. PS PS Five VRR details uh, have come in finally from Digital Foundry. As we were asking them, you know, we were hoping for this information by the show. Xbox VRR range is twenty to one twenty. PS5 VR range is 48 to 60 FPS, and wow, wow, wow. it also, I don't know if you saw this, D, but it doesn't support 444 color sampling, right? Yeah, that's because of the bandwidth of the uh, the PlayStation. It doesn't have the full bandwidth of HDMI 2.1, so because of I that, they talk can't... I'm, I'm going to raise you up wow. here. I forgot to do that, D-Batch, but uh, yeah, that is basically the amount of color data that you can pass through at the same time. The, yeah, know, I got... I got a bone to pick though. So la- last week I did say on the show that it's not on the system level, and like I was getting dragged all over Twitter. <laughs> you know, some 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 porta potty guy came after me. Some guy wearing red panties came after me. Like what guys the- were com- guys were coming after me, and I was saying, listen, this is not truly working at a system level because if it was working at a system level, you would just put it on, leave it, and not worry about it. Now I'm hearing all these different things. Like I, I, I got to be honest, like. I try to be respectful to other people's <laughs> platforms and, and other people that I respect that are, that are knowledgeable. But mm. just because they're knowledgeable and they have a bigger platform, it doesn't mean that they're always right. Now, I'm hearing all of this garbage today to cover up for the fact that Sony's VR implementation isn't as good. Now, I'm hearing things such as, well, VRR isn't something that you want to turn on with all games. Oh, well, VRR, it causes these type of problems. Now, when they were doing comparisons before with VRR on the Series X, we didn't really hear any of these complaints. Now, all of a sudden, when uh, another console can't do it as effectively, now VRR is bad. Now, being actually a a, a TV expert, I'm going to just say it as it is. Yes, VRR can pose some problems with TVs that don't have um, local dimming or or TVs that have local dimming. It can turn off certain zones. Yes, this is the case. But on on an Xbox Series X, if you have an OLED, mo- like there should be asterisks with this. If you have an OLED monitor, there's no reason why you would want to turn off VRR ever. You're going to get the best performance. You're going to get the smoothest frame rates. If you're the negatives VRR. are the exception, not the rule. Yeah. You're going to, if you're running VR on the PC, if you're running it on, on Xbox, you know, G Sync, Free Sync, it's always going to be a benefit. It's not a benefit if you're running it on the PlayStation. And the game is going below 48 uh, frames per second. Then, you know, it breaks it and it's a hit. So now all of a sudden VRR is not a good thing. It is a good thing. And if it was working the way it was intended to work on a system level, you wouldn't have to worry about it. The low frame rate compensation would kick in and everything would be gravy. But on on Sony's platform, unfortunately, this is not the case. So it's not working completely on a system (laughs) level. I was right. Y'all can suck a... (laughs) Oh, hey, whoa, hey, hey, I'll hey. just leave it there. I'll just let, leave it let me, there. Let me, jump, let me jump in here. And two, just whatever you're doing with your damn audio, do, you made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> just redu- it reduce, it. It, reduce it through software even more, and I will raise you up even more, all right? But all right. what well, D is trying to say is that if not for um, stupid idiots, and, and look, chat, you know I'm only human, right? And I make mistakes, and... And one of those may or may not be me calling Red Dragon a stupid fucking idiot. Because people like this come at people like me who don't mind going out on a limb and, and just saying, hey, this is what I think is happening. Uh, this is kind of odd because I've never heard of uh, VR working this way. And this is just m- my own personal experience. I've never heard of it working this way. And, you know, people like that try to clip parts of the show and then make it look like we said things we didn't say, even though we said we need to wait and see. We're not sure. We've never seen something like this, but we're glad that it hit PS5. This, sure. you know, Red, Red Dragon. Here's what he does: he he he, he tweets his trash ass fucking twi- tweet. He hits mute on it because he gets killed by everybody and runs off. And that's why he don't reply to nobody, right? But but, but but really, clip this bitch. Why don't you clip this part of the show? And we're not telling you that you were wrong. Of course you were. You always are. You get destroyed every day. We we nearly speculated on how this could work, what it was, and obviously it is not going to be... It's not as good as the Series X version, and that's fine. At least they got a version of it, right? I mean, I would champion that. At least you got a version of it. Hopefully it will get better in the future, but as of right now, man, like, BRR, this whole thing, these people try to turn it into something and, and try, to, try to make it look like we were saying things we didn't say. 
No. It's just ridiculous. And, and, and just, just to quote, you know, the outlet that did it today, they said that low comp, low frame rate compensation is not working on a system level. It's not working like the Xbox Series X. You know, developers, they have to patch it in. They also talked about the, the frame rates. A lot of people were saying, oh, I'm seeing like 100 frame rates per second, da 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 When it's running in fidelity mode, it's not, it's not, you're not getting those frame rates. You're getting much lower frame rates. And when, uh, like, Insomniac did a good job. I'm not going to say they didn't do a good job with the implementation on it in, in the other modes, but in those modes, to achieve those high frame rates, it's running at a very low resolution and they're checkerboarding it up. So, you know, it's, it's good that they implemented it, but let's just be honest here. It's nowhere near the same as Xbox Solution. It's not as robust and it's not, Certain aspects of it are not working but you just on a system level. Is going to you know that that's not allowed. That's not allowed to be pointed out because that makes you extremist or whatever else. You know. Um, so I just again, people that watch the show. Well, that's why we appreciate people that actually watch the show. Which, by the way, is the majority of people. Which is obvious by the amount of people that watch the show. The people in the minority that don't watch the show that try to run with clips and bullshit out of context. That you know, those guys, those fuck faces are very. They're but definitely in the minority. And that's obvious by the fact that you never know what the fuck you're talking about. And that's why you get killed by people on Twitter when you try to misquote us. So, again, we want to give a shout out to everyone that did Can I run talk about and, and a little jump. Bit of the, the VRR stuff that's going on. I'm reading an article about, like, some people are asking, like, what's going on with it? Because this isn't just other fundamental stuff that's going on with it. VR on the PS5 is fundamentally, like, a pretty good addition, right? The current yeah. gen console is great, but their decision to not support PlayStation 4 games and not use FreeSync mm -hmm. yeah, means that it's awful. not quite as comprehensive as it could be. That is something that people don't understand. And like, not to mention, like, if you get out of you know certain like ranges on the VRR, the display chroma resolution goes down to like you know it could go to four two two if you're playing a game at four K at one hundred and twenty hertz. So this goes down, and it can have levels like if you don't change your tv depending on which one you have if you don't put it to limited auto if you don't if you have it on high you can get black levels to mismatch mm -hmm. on the ps5 so this is like little things like obviously this is all like you know they can change it with software and they will they'll iterate this as they go through but you know some of the vrr obviously like this is their first iteration into it can we get our heads out of our asses like <laughs> xbox had this for a while like this is software that's being used it's awesome but it's going to take them a little while to perfect it or even make it better, much like Xbox and has that's, been doing, And right? that's why I want to, you know, VRR isn't that great a topic to keep growing. But mainly the reason I wanted to cover this is just to to just address idiots that uh, come at people like myself and D and anyone else. Wrong or right, we've all been wrong and right about a lot of different things. Yeah. But ultimately, we're, we're at least putting ourselves out there and offering, you know, some kind of thought on what might be happening for those in the chat that want to know or all the messages that we're getting. And it doesn't matter if we're spot on or not spot on. More than, more than, more than likely, we're kind of in the ballpark, right? But either way, just because we speculate on something like this, potentially not being system level in at least some way, you know, at least we're going out there and we're saying something without waiting on a bunch of fucking, you know, people to tell us. Like, at least we're, we got what it takes to at least give our fucking thoughts on it before we have uh, something yeah. to back it up. Like, we're at least out there. And it's, it's people that try to call people out when they're, when they're out there doing that kind of stuff. Like, that's just, it, it's ridiculous. We have the it's, kahunas. And to correct, uh, and yeah. to correct uh, to, and to, you, you misspoke a little bit earlier, dealer. Like, and it was a mistake. I see in the notes that you had it right. But because we have notes, everybody for the you know about our topics. Oh. Um, you said it goes from uh, forty eight to sixty. It goes from forty eight to one twenty hertz on uh, uh, which we call on PS five. That's the range it goes on, and the other ones are twenty. So not forty eight, twenty to one twenty on mm. Xbox. And so the ranges, like let's say you're playing fucking Elden Ring, that goes to forty five frames below forty eight. You will start seeing jagged like jut like jitters on your game. Because VRR on the PS5 does not go below that. If you hit 45 yeah. or even 40, which a lot of games do on the consoles, right? A lot of games do that, and that's what's going to happen when you're on PS5. On Xbox, you won't. It could go all the way down to 20. That window is very, 20. very important, right? That's kind yeah, of the whole point of it. I believe, I believe the forced rate, when you do it on the system level, I believe that's when it's from 48 to 60. I'm pretty, is that I'm where pretty that's sure coming on from? that. And then, and then when the, the developers, they can patch it from like, you know... 48 to 120 or whatever but i think on the system level i'm pretty sure it's at 48 to 60 I, i'm pretty and sure even if you didn't out. remember that correctly and you're saying i'm pretty sure for a reason because you're not 100 certain 
is you know if you're not got that right that's okay you know well, yeah, you're, you're acknowleding I just wanted that to, right I just there. wanted to clear that oh. up before some stupid fuck face who isn't a real who isn't a real gamer starts <laughs> clipping like a friend of mine and starts trying dead, to like dead dragon. what they're saying <laughs> Yeah, hey, stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid fuck. Uh, so hey, that's what I, it is. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, the BRR okay. thing, like, I really just want to address people that are that are really just jealous because you know they fucking ran their shit into the ground and people stopped paying attention to their bullshit. And it's pretty <laughs> obvious they're insane by some of the shit they were uploading a couple years ago, 2016 era. You know, it's it's kind of obvious, but still, uh, I don't want to harp on this forever. It's just it's just frustrating, chat. We're only human. Yeah, man. We're just guys Fact. with microphones, and and as guys with yeah. microphones, we can't. You know, you ever had your sister or your bitch ass brother lie about something you said? That's fucking annoying. Now imagine some know, dumb bitch trying to discredit <laughs> you on the fuck. You know, it just gets old, man. So that's why yeah. we go in on it a little bit here and there. Let me just add. Let me just add a little quick to that. What annoys me the most is that okay, you know, yeah, we're allowed to get things wrong. We're not going to always get everything right, but. When we do get things right, when people come after us, these same guys, they never, you know, say, you know what, we were wrong about this. My bad. You know what they do instead? They run away or they delete tweets. Cause and they don't even sure... know what the fuck we're talking about when we're talking about it. Like, to even call us out on it anyway. They don't even know right. what the fuck it is, how it works. But, you know, again, hey, I want to I wanna thank, and I want a uh, big shout out to Lethal Papa, by the way. Um, he is... I don't, well, you know, just shout out to Papa. He's one of the best mods ever. We got Dreadpool. We've also got... Uh, We've got uh, brutal, gr- brutal. I don't know how to pronounce that. G B O N. I'm guessing. And then we've got so many others like Yadani. We got Dark C M F. We got Assassin Lupa. We got Face Twenty Three Brooklyn, New York. We got Bald Danos Showguns. Uh, all kinds of people in the chat. Phil Pyromancer, look at you, Kirby Lu- Kirby Luis. We got so many people in the chat. And we appreciate you guys. Thanks for Let me get tuning some of in. These super chats before they gets fucking out of hand. Go so, ahead. There's a go. So we got Elk uh, uh, Elk Dude. He's the new member. Thanks for joining, man. We got Hargi Chani. The pony narratives are so predictable. Pony vision kills brain cells. Damn, Hargi, <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. Hargi's savage, uh, man. We got Bald yeah. Thanos. He's our VR has benefits. It won't let your mom know you're playing PlayStation by yourself. <laughs> Uh, we got uh, the L.A. Chargers fan. He's a super stressful few days at work investigating a murder. What the hell? Damn. Happy to just stress listening to y'all. If you don't believe me, I will also record myself. Lol. Well, Make you sure you also put you're witnessing another murder here on the show today. So, you know, shout again, out. hey, uh, shout out to you, L.A. Chargers fan. Yeah, we got uh, uh, Gohan Bach. He says, I usually only get to listen to this podcast the morning after while driving during work. Glad I finally caught it live. Keep up the great content. Thanks, man. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate you. We got John Wolf. Keep up the great work, RDX crew. Funny thing is, I used to call my dog's wiener the Red Dragon, so that tells you what you need to know. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Hey, uh, John Wolf, uh, thank you for the story, sir. Sometimes I reach it, and I'm like, I just read that. Didn't it's, I? Like the, <laughs> it's like Splendiferous and the, and the Beaver thing the other week, but uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we got DCRU Seeds. I don't know. Uh, book those vacations off work. Send your girlfriend away for a week and have enough caffeine on hand to fuel a battalion. Six more months to Starfield, boys. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. He's I'm prepared. super excited. Yeah, be careful with that caffeine. That's all of them. That's yeah. all of them, man. I just want They're getting out of hand. I saw them, and I was like, oh, shit. Stop talking, you fucks. <laughs> hey, we, hey, we got to give a shout-out to almost a 1,000 people already watching this live, guys. We started 10 minutes late. Thanks for joining us. Hit the like button if you haven't. And uh, tell a buddy we're live. We got a ton of great topics. And uh, VRR is definitely not even close to the most interesting one, but there's a lot tied to that because we can't even speculate on how something might work without idiots trying to lie about what we're saying. So that's always fun. Tallest trees get the most wind, damn it. And uh, it's windy up here. Hey, Xbox with us a showcase. That was announced June 12th at, uh, at uh, what time is that? That's uh, 10 p. I Pacific. 10, I think it's 10, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, the best time. That's no. all you need to know. No. 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 Central, Central time is the best God, time. It's, it's, God time is the best time. East Coast, baby. No. Well, I didn't hear what he said. Is my do. <laughs> hey, anyway, Xbox Whatever. and Xbox finally announces. Uh, we, we, we all made videos about this. This is their E3. And we got a ton of other game leaks later in the show. But oh, yeah. just to get this general announcement out there, if you are excited for Xbox's Summer Game Showcase, if you remember, we had... Uh, th- thousands and thousands and thousands of people live last year after the showcase and we were just you know super excited super happy to see a lot of new games a lot of big things the return of third parties in a, in a big way to xbox's uh stage right we saw games like soccer 2 which unfortunately will will probably be delayed till next year we saw a lot of different things and this year 
They are bringing back third parties. They're bringing a ton of first party games, and I expect big things, Tim Dog. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we got the announcement we were all looking for. Uh, some speculated it would be in May, uh, later in May, <laughs> but we got the announcement, and um, I'm hearing really good things. I'm hearing, uh, uh, well, Rand was the you know he was quoted as saying that um, supposedly all the studios have submitted. Uh, something for the show and obviously they're going to swift through that and they're going to make a show uh internally people are really excited I, I, you know this has the potential to be a really strong show and um I, it's on a sunday which is great you know we'll be here uh i'll be there well, i will be here on rdx and we'll be covering it uh it's going to be a great time uh, I, you know uh you know we haven't gotten to the prediction phase because it just got you know announced but it's just really nice that they they picked the date that I you know June twelfth, which was probably where E three was going to be, um, and uh, I'm very excited. I think that they're going to really uh, knock it out of the ballpark. I think they have a ton of stuff. Yeah, and and may, you know again, this is without. I don't think first every first party studio is going to show up there at all. I don't believe that for a second. But you know, I do think we'll see. A lot of really, really cool games in addition to potentially things like Jedi Fallen Order 2, right? I mean, there's so many other big games that are just in hiatus. What about Gotham Knights? And uh, that might be, you know, regardless who they partner with, the potential is there for a ton of big games to finally be shown off in a big way. I think we're all excited for that. You know, the funny thing is, like, for the first time, like, I almost feel like they don't even need like that third party, right? Like that a bunch of like third parties going in there. I think like the 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 Disney event, whatever the May the Fourth be with you is going to be where Jedi Fallen Order kind of gets mm-hmm. announced. That's been rumored. I think the key, uh, Jeff Keeley's having his show, right? Gamer like Game Fest, Summer Fest, whatever it's called. So there's going to okay. be announcements over there, and I think they announced even the multiplayer of Halo there. So Xbox might even have a presence in that show. Uh, but Man, if that remember, was like, a year last, ago already, wasn't it? That was a year Jeez. ago, right, where they announced it. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of stuff. Last year, man, last year was the best E3 I've seen that Xbox has done, right? And and remember, before that, before that show, we were talking about, I hope they take some notes from Bethesda, where you just have one guy go out there, say, here's the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. Todd Howard in his freaking jacket is like, you know, Robo Jack. He goes out there and calls out the game and that's it. Then they show the game. I hope that's what they do again. Like make it all about the games. If you have some cool stuff to talk about, talk about it, but don't emphasize on it and just bring out what you have. Um, I also want to see what uh, compulsion is doing, man. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's, it's yeah. four years, four years. They've been quiet, like just done nothing. Yeah. Like, let me see what compulsion is doing. Cause they were a studio already built. They got a bunch of people. There's been a lot of leaks about like, having, like, some harpies and going into, like, lore of that and some crazy fantastical stuff. Bro, you and... said four years. I mean, fuck, well, Machine Games is five years. Exactly. Same, same with them. I hope we see some some pretty good uh, turn 10, too, right? Like, I hope we see some pretty good surprises. Years for them. That we... Yeah, 15 years mm-hmm. for them. Like, I hope we see some pretty good stuff that surprises us there. We will see like turn 10 there. We massive. will see turn 10 there yeah, a thousand we're, we're percent. Forza. And I've actually got some information uh, regarding Forza. I'm releasing that tomorrow, uh, but I'm being told some things behind the scenes. I don't know what has been said where i haven't tracked down and been like oh this is uh some guy hinted this five years ago i don't know i just was told a lot of things i know obviously i've leaked stuff about this game a little bit before and i know this stuff is accurate so i'll be talking about that in the video tomorrow and going in on uh some other stuff with that so again that'll be tomorrow's video and by the way i can't say anything specifically but i will definitely have more coverage before e3 at some point i think microsoft have some they have i don't know like uh, they have something some kind of thing that they're going to be pushing there that i don't think any of us are really thinking about some kind of overall message there and, and i'll definitely know more before that show but still i mean it's it's in a fun time forte we've got all kinds of games coming finally starfield may or may not be the end of the holy shit just keep bringing those games but either right. way starfield coming out this year that you got to expect big, big gameplay moments from this game. 
Yeah, man. I think they're I think they're going to take it to the stratosphere when it comes to blowing out everything that we need to know about this game. I don't think it's going to be like any type of just one thing. It's going they're going to show you the vastness of the world. I don't think they're going to go and basically tell you exactly every area that's going to be playable in this game. But I think they're going to take you to like a place and say, hey, guess what? This place is bigger, like a space station, maybe the biggest thing that we ever seen in the game when it comes to like bigger than the map of Skyrim. Then they're going to tell you, and guess what? there's seven of these out there that's even <laughs> bigger than this. So I think there's going to be a complete underestimate of how big and how amazing this game is probably going to be because they're already talking about that. They have to cut content most likely to get this game out on time. So they're going to like kind of just put stuff out over time to give you the full experience. But this game's going to be so feature complete when it finally does release. Um, I don't think there's going to be anything that you're going to be wanting or missing when this game actually is uh, starting to be talked about. I, I think that's a good, that's a good thing that you said, man, about that. Like, you know, this space station or this planet or whatever, it kind of, reminds me of like the uh, legacy dungeons and elden ring right mm-hmm. like yep. big ass castles that you can spend 10 hours in just going and exploring those bitch ass harpies that won't hit you Dude, Hopefully yeah everything right those, 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 those eagles with the claws just fuck you up i want uh, like, i want i want to you know, after you finish what you're gonna say i want to uh, well first i'll just say it now people are asking on twitter and <laughs> messages already on twitter this is far cry six they added a a mission here it's a stranger things tie-in so, as you see, we're about to go through the portal into the upside down. I don't know if you guys have seen Stranger Things. And this is part of Far Cry 6 now. It's just an extra mission along with one where you're uh, with Danny Trejo defending him while he makes tacos. Uh, and, uh, you know, me and Cody's were playing this, having a blast. Uh, it looks pretty good still. But, uh, Zalker, I mean, again, Starfield's going to be big. I want to hear your thoughts on, you know, potentially what we might see a lot of this year at that at the event. Again, we have a lot more leaks uh, and stuff to talk about later in the show. And then I want D-Batch's take Red as well. Fall. Redfall, man. They got mm-hmm. it. Like, if, if we remember the the first show last year, right, with Xbox Bethesda, it looks like a goddamn law firm at this point. It's like Xbox, Bethesda, <laughs> Activision, Blizzard. It's like, what are we doing? Like, how many games are we going to have on this Bethesda, uh, Bethesda uh, Bros. Incorporated, yeah. Bethesda <laughs> Yeah, like all the like all this stuff. Um, I want to see Redfall because that closed out the show last year. Like their first show ever, they want like usually the closeout is like the big game, right? Like the big game they want you to look at and kind of be hyped for for the future. And so I need to see that. If I don't see that game at this show, like gameplay wise, not not trailer wise, I need fucking gameplay. If I don't see it at gameplay wise, I would say that it might get delayed to spring. It better that's get one shown of the big gameplay ones. wise. That, that's what I'm saying. If it doesn't, like I really want to see gameplay because like every like I, I'm very hyped for that. I love that type of game. I know a lot of people didn't like it. I liked back back to bed. You know, like I like <laughs> I like all those. Like I just like I just like those co op games, man. I have a lot of fun with them when I play with my buddies. So that's that's something I'm really looking forward to is Redfall, and I want to see what Contraband's got going. Oh, and the uh, certain I'm, affinities I'm, battle royale. I fucking love BRs. And you know, I there's see certain Halo people out there that just convinced the shit that just released is a battle rail mode, and they're the, willing the, to die. I played it. They're willing to die it. on that fucking hill. But it's uh, not a, this it's is not definitely BR, not folks. the BR mode anyone was talking about, and trying to cling on to a fucking definition looks corny. But still, I mean, hey, again, you know, they're going to have a lot of stuff. I can't wait for it. D-Batch, I want to hear from you. You've been nice and, and super quiet in the background. You're always respectful, D-Batch. And I appreciate you. What are your thoughts about this E3? And finally, it's that time of year. Well, first, I'm excited because it falls on my birthday weekend. So that's pretty cool. I'm going oh, ha- to be hammered on that stream. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> oh, but no, I- I'm-, I'm excited Watch to see his mic work perfectly, even though he's hammered <laughs> yeah. for the only time. Yeah, right now it's <laughs> clipping again. <laughs> I'm ex- I'm excited. I'm excited to see Forza. I'm excited to see, uh, you know, Starfield. Star- Starfield. Um, I'm really excited to see new stuff. I know they're going to just hit us with some unanticipated stuff at that event. And I think it's a great event for Xbox because E3 is pretty much canceled this year. So they have a moment for all eyes to be on them and to be on the Xbox platform. So I think it's a, a great opportunity for Xbox. And I think they have an opportunity to really hit it out the park and get a lot more traction to the Xbox brand. I think it's sad that we're not getting a full E3 show this year. I think it's even sadder that we're not even hearing anything from Sony. Like, is Sony going to show anything? Like, do they have anything to show us? Like, if I was a Sony fan right now, like solely a Sony Sony fan, I'd be really upset because Microsoft is going to have a big show showcasing what's coming in the years to come. And Sony's just been quiet. It's just crickets over there. Well, they got to have but, something right, D. 
I, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 look for, I, I, look I, for I, August, man. August, September. Yeah, That's yeah. Really they They'll gotta come do... out August, September. Yeah. They have to have something for Ragnarok. But coming from like a competition standpoint, you should have something around the same time your competition is showing something to get some attention to you. But this is good for the Xbox brand, and I, like I said, I'm going to be excited because it's my birthday weekend, and I think they're going to really surprise us with some uh, some future content, and I think we're going to start to get a glimpse of true next-generation games. I really think we're going to see some stuff that's going to wow us. We already got that at the Game Awards, man. Some of the uh, games, so- I was like, holy mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, I'm 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 excited, man. It's a good time to be an Xbox gamer and just a gamer in general. I wouldn't be surprised if we see like new hardware, and I'm not talking console hardware. I'm talking about just something for cloud. I think that we might see. There's been a lot of rumors yeah. going around about that. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like something for. TV I know Phil right? has been hiding look. stuff in the background here and there, and I know a lot of people haven't noticed oh, yeah. it. Uh, oh yeah, me and Nano have been talking about that <laughs> behind the scenes, but yeah, they definitely got something, whether they reveal it there or not. You know, they they will have something eventually for some kind of streaming something. This is something we've been talking about forever, right? Oh, so, yeah. oh yeah, and that's and that's something that's been like, yeah, it's been rumored for a while that they've been trying to get that down, and you know, at this point, like they might reveal it here because you know the cloud has been doing really well. It's grown and Game Pass has grown, and they're trying to get it everywhere. So why not even have it on TV where you can just like plug it in and then boom, move on. Yeah, the weird thing is, though, uh, you know, it's kind of odd that you would build hardware to do something like that when you can literally just run an application on a TV or a phone. Maybe, you know, certain partners, uh, TV partners, you know, won't have that app or something. But inevitably, uh, you know, my vision years ago was, hey, they would eventually have Game Pass apps on your damn TV. And yeah, you would just yeah. play that shit. So well, I don't, I I don't know why you would do That's why I always thought that so, that uh, Samsung partnership that they had for a while is going to probably start showing the fruits of the labor when it comes to that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think CES next year is something to look at that. But that all that stuff is coming. All that, you know, uh, when they talk about 3 billion gamers and we've went over that, uh, that's definitely a part of it. So I think you guys are on the right track with that. And also, the, the they've been talking about the... Uh, you know the uh, the Chromecast uh, competitor or whatever they want to call it, the dongle for since 2017. The so, stick, like the fire. Yeah, stick. yeah. So, so I mean, listen, I, it's going to be a great E3. I feel, and I feel like we're going to have upcoming shows. We're going to have uh, a lot of predictions and stuff that's going to be coming. Uh, you know, st- stuff that's coming out of the woodwork. So, so I'm like everyone else, really excited. And I want a spring release. I want something that they announce yeah. for spring. I'm sorry, like this spring has been fucking. Don't dead. be sorry, bitch. I want I want something for spring. I want them to talk about because that's what E3 should be, right? E3 should be about hey, this is what's coming in the next year, right? Or and then maybe a little ahead of time. Like that's what I want to see. And I want to see like, all right, we got that stuff coming out this holiday, you know, Redfall or whatever, and Starfield, and maybe you know, Forza Motorsport and all that stuff. Like, but I want to see like, hey, and in spring. This is what you got to look forward to, mm-hmm. right? Because like, if you're gonna make a subscription service like Game Pass, you better keep people there. And I get like you filled in the blanks with like some stuff like stop first lecturing party us, deals. Dad. Fuck. Like, I just want it. I want it, bitch. I want it. We know we all, we, gaming is a year round hobby, man. One hundred percent. And we've been trying to get. I think Xbox has done better. I think this past generation than they had before in releasing games in more months, right? More months than a year. But uh, hey, look, Sakura. Don't let these uh, get out of control again. I'm going to give some shout-outs real quick to oh, Fun shit. Speculation, Mav in the chat, Dark CMF. We've got Caitlin. We've got, uh, obviously, we've got Brutal in the chat, channel member, as well as Assassin Lupa. Uh, judged, judge, <laughs> d- judge the Chief. Shout-out to you, buddy. As well as Shoguns and Crazy Louie. Look at I, you in I the chat, him. buddy. I got him. I got him. So we got Brigadier Blue. This is the farthest I can go. He says, 1,000-plus watching. Smash the like button, everyone. Yeah. I agree. Hit that like. Yeah, chat, chat, uh, got, chat, chat. Shout out to the real chat. Yeah, we got uh, Dark CMF. He just said, not NBA 2K22, but Elden Ring Global Code. He just put it out there. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, Elden we got a shout out to Dark second. CMF giving away Elden Ring. Uh, uh, NBA 2K22 just hit Game Pass, guys. So if you haven't checked yeah, it yeah. out, check it out. Yeah, so we got Splendiferous, member for seven months. They got to bring the guy that played his longhorn in his underwear back. Make it <laughs> official. I only listen to this show because you guys are strange. Lovered, yes. Hey, Thanks, you talking you talking about that uh, didgeridoo guy? The guy, I, don't know, I think it's what he, the guy that, that, that was like about. naked in the middle of the room, <laughs> surrounded by people in suits, <laughs> and he was oh playing the didgeridoo. Shout out to Gaz, by the way. He says memes in the super chat as well. Gaz, uh, yeah. check him out. Mm-hmm. Game one. 
We got Garuda and Trude says Xbox is consistently dominating the news for all the right reasons. And what is supposed to be a first party game drought, the narrative has turned. Every move is in the right direction. True golden era. Yeah. I mean, he's not wrong about like, you know, even with games not dropping, they're still in the news like constantly. Like yeah. everything they do, like it's just insane. I, I, yeah, I think people kind of underestimated. I think the twelfth is going to be huge for them, but I think that entire week is going to be crazy because they got so much stuff that they could talk about. It's not going to all fit on that one day. You're going to get a lot of interviews. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of different uh, information from different um, parts of Microsoft and uh, Xbox Game Studios and even Bethesda over the course of the entire week. So. Definitely just sit back and enjoy all the, the, the fruits of gaming during that week from Xbox. It's going to be pretty crazy. The floodgates is lifted. Shout, uh, I'll get the one from Pace here, 23 Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Shout out to you, buddy, man. Just for, uh, Thanks for supporting the show. He says, the Insomniac use a reproje- reprojection. Uh, the Spider-Man games run 1440p with DRS. Uh, shout out to you, Brooklyn. I uh, do appreciate you, buddy. Go ahead. Uh, Thank Zappi. you. Yeah, we got Risk It. He says, Dealer and RDX makes every... O- Aussie Wednesday worth the early start. <laughs> Sub chat. I'm listening today. Can't chat much, but love to RDX and chat X showcase. Let's go. You should have been in the chat uh, <laughs> last. We was on a party like 4 a.m. this morning. <laughs> we, it, yeah. was, it was crazy, man. You should have been in there. But yeah, it's fun. Yeah, we got uh, Game and Tech. He says D Batch is the bomb button and Foz- Fonzarelli just blocks people without reason on Twitter. Oh shit! <laughs> Damn. Oh, facts. Look, there, I'm did. sure there's a reason though. You know. Yeah, there is a reason. Oh, does he really? Or did I just make oh, yeah, because he's a bitch, bro. I'm oh, shit. <laughs> Shout out to Fonzo. Shout out to Fonzo. I go, I go to the instant block if somebody brings up some shit I've already addressed or just is on some bitch shit. I just block him instantly. I ain't there to yep. pay attention to it. Unlike so Schreier, got, though, I don't just uh, block for no reason, even though I never even talk to you. You know, that's We got, we that's got three more. You leave Schreier. Go ahead. Uh, we got Brigadier's Blue. He says, what everyone's thoughts on a surprise game or two Xbox could show at E3 we know a lot they could show, but what about some surprises? Uh, rise 2. Rise 2. Uh, rise 2. D-Batch says Rise 2. Anything yeah. else? Man, if they show Rise 2, I'm going to fucking cry. i be so happy. <laughs> I love that fucking game, dude. That I, game I was enjoy. such a good game. So underrated, man. It mm. was, yeah. Um, like I said, I think maybe the Compulsion game would be a surprise. Um, what else? Uh, oh, no, what, with the, party, the machine games party. team, if they're working on another Wolfenstein, like we've heard they're doing, uh, yep. Quake could potentially be there, right? Um, oh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff, and, and again, we're going to get into some more leaks here later in the show. Laura Starkiller says, "Let's see some uh, Forza Motorsport, Starfield, Redfall, and Hellblade 2 gameplay at the showcase event." Shout out to you, buddy. And Indiana then got Jones. Indiana, that might be a ways out, though, brother. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Uh, also, don't forget. Eventually, we got to see some damn Fable gameplay. You know, Facts. so uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, uh, who knows if that'll be there. But, yo, Donnie, we got one more from you. No one's Donnie. talking about that game anymore. It's just kind of gone in the, like, everybody's like, well, just wait. It's all good. Take your time, yeah. man. Yep. But we got one from yo, Donnie, if you want to grab that one. Yeah, yeah, I got that. He says, want to say hi to my all my favorite Xbox and official Arby's and Raising Cane influencers. <laughs> Please use a proper tone when calling folks at faces. Fuck faces. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck, ah, fuck faces. Shout out to you, Donnie. And then Ashtray. Tell me why. By Ashtray Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've almost got 1,200 people watching live, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in, rocking out with us. Hit the like button. If you haven't, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. If you are new as we move forward, again, we got some really cool leaks regarding some other stuff uh, that Xbox are doing. But right now, we've got some stuff regarding Starfield. Uh, for And this is from a verified guy that worked on the game like 100 percent, he did work on the game unfortunately he was on some hating ass shit but you know what we're gonna take his information and we're gonna we're gonna throw it out there and kind of discuss what he's talking about so he does he's not a big fan of the engine they're using he says the flying isn't fun spoilers there's flying he says it doesn't look as good as horizon forbidden west which is an instant red flag to me why the fuck are you comparing it to horizon forbidden west randomly and secondly that that game has nowhere near the scope of Starfield, and you can't do a fraction of the things that you're going to be able to do in Starfield. It's kind of a different engine built for a different purpose. But here's something that that uh, who was it? Uh, Obi actually said this on a podcast. Perfect. Two K twenty two in the story mode, you skate around, a, you skateboard around a fucking city like an idiot on a skateboard, obviously, and the skating is horrible. But the Man. basketball game isn't bad. 
right? The basketball yeah. game, they're, they're skating in it. You're obviously going to be flying in Starfield, apparently. But according to this developer and whatever build he was working on, the flying was not fun. That's all opinion. But I'd like to think, hopefully, it's going to be fun. But even if it's not the best, I, I just it's hard to imagine it not being... He didn't say it wasn't good. He says it wasn't fun. And I don't really, yeah. I don't know what that means, Zalker. I don't know either, man. Like, I, I mean, the whole comparing it to Horizon Forbidden West is like the dumbest fucking thing. <laughs> like, what do, like, what do, why? Like, you know, one's like a bow in like mountains and shit. The other one's like, you're going to multiple planets. It's future, it's sci fi. It's just, I don't know. I just think that, you know, all this comparison thing, the, the engine thing is what got to me like thinking, like, cause what he talked about the engine. He said it sucks and it's trash for developers. <laughs> like it's hard, yeah. it's hard to work on. But he said it's going to look great for gamers. Yeah. So it's like, so, but okay, it, but not so as good as Horizon run? Forbidden West was like. Okay, so what's it doesn't look run? as good as like one of the it best looking over games the place, out right bro. now. But it was like it was like all over the place, right? Like it just was like he was complaining about something, saying other things are great, and it's like, <clears> okay, well, you didn't give us like, all right, the flying sucks. Like, what? Okay, what does that do for us? Like, I don't um, know, man. My biggest thing is, does the flying suck now? Is it going to Is the game coming out next month? I mean, yeah. a lot of this stuff can be, you know, um, tooled over the course of the next couple of months. And everybody knows the creation engine just because they put another a two at the end of it. It wasn't, <laughs> the greatest, it wasn't the greatest anyway. So, you know, we're not here to, like, look at an engine and say, oh, is this engine optimized? For, as long as the game is fun, which is most of these games always come out being fun. You got to remember every Bethesda game that was published and developed by them has been a game of the year contender. So except for, uh, except for Fallout 76. Well, Fallout 76 wasn't um, developed by them. Look, wasn't developed by look, them. I'm just trying I'm trying to throw devil's advocacy at you. No, okay? they're, 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 no, no, stop, stop trying to be hey, what about Wolfenstein Youngblood? That's proof that Elder Scrolls 6 oh, is gonna be garbage. horrible. Okay, that yeah, yeah, that was that was that was definitely yeah. that co that co pilot thing that they made too. Oh yeah, that was bad. Too. Look, like the flying apparently isn't fun. I don't know what that means. I don't know what you can, is there combat in space? Is it just A to B kind of go? Is it no man's sky level? That seems kind of crazy, but also they seem like they are doing super ambitious things. Like, um, I just don't know what that could mean. And in terms of the visuals not looking good as the Rise of Forbidden West, it's a very odd comparison. Uh, especially considering they're not the same type of game, not yeah. even close. I have a feeling it's going to be like Space Engineers. Space like, Engineers. I don't, know if any, I don't know if you guys have ever played that no. game, but you can tailor your ship into how anything you want. To can how you it tailor flies, it into fun? How, like, no, I'm just saying, like, you can just do anything you want with your ship. You make it any way you want. You can make it like a speedster. It goes far. You can make it into this big tank that you can fight things on and explore other worlds. Like, it's it's pretty insane. So you're you saying this developer game. made a trash ship and he didn't have fun with it? I think so. Who knows? Maybe it just had like one wonky right kind of, side. And like, one... like it's called Starfield. Like, what kind of ship are you going to have? Like, are you going to be mm-hmm. able to tailor it? Are you going to be able to make it what you want? Are you going to be able to do what you want? Like, how much customized? Like, like what? Do, what are we able to do? Right? Because to me, think... it doesn't. It doesn't think it's going. I, I feel like if they're going to be ambitious, right? Like, you can do whatever you want with your ship. You can create different types of ships. You can do different types of things. Like, you can join. Like they they talked about this in the in the goddamn interview thing, right? Like this game seems so big that they're doing so many little videos beforehand. To yeah. kind of give people an idea of what's happening. Like, they didn't really do that before, right? Because everybody knew what Elder Scrolls was. Everybody knew what Fallout was. Mm-hmm. They just showed you for 20 minutes on stage what it was, and you're like, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an Elder Scrolls. Yeah, that's a Fallout game. Fucking excited. And that's, that's how it. you can steer it back to E3. Is that we're actually going to see a lot of right, this in, in, in a matter of months, right? So I'm really excited to see uh, some of the flying aspects potentially. You know there's got to be hey, building in here, Tim Dog. You know there's got to be some combat. You know there's got to be some narrative driven quests in this game like any bethesda game what are your thoughts on what this developer said and you know any takeaways you've had since this has happened i think pretty much we covered it i think he 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 emphasizes that it looks good and it's getting good um he also talks about how uh, enormous the game is and how they're gonna have to cut it down um, and that they're in the bug, uh, the the bug cutting stage, which is where you would want them to be uh, for your release right about now. Yeah. So I wasn't so taken aback. The only thing that was stupid was the Horizon comment. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's much to take away when he's talking about the engine. He's talking about the developers working with it, and that's historically always been uh, a wonky engine. He said the shooting's okay. But then, like I said, he 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 prefaces this, and he kept saying, "But it looks good. It's looking good." So um, <laughs> it's a piece oh, of shit. It's fucking up, but it looks so, good. Yeah, it's just so weird. Like, 
I, I think people it. were really just looking to to shit on the game, but I think so. uh, yeah, I think when E three comes on, I think we're gonna be uh, really excited. To All right, so let's, let's 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 try to get a develop. Let's try to get this developer a little bit of a leeway because I do think that it might be the trash bag uh, person that was interviewing him that might ask him that question <laughs> because it doesn't make sense. He, like you said, he talked about all of the different pluses and minuses about the game. Uh, I think these questions were kind of forward to him in the place. And he probably asked him and said, Hey, how's the game looking on the visual front? You know, like and he probably asked him like compared to what he said, well, compared to something like horizon. And you know, cause horizon is one of the best looking games that's out there. So he probably said, yeah, compared to that, he said, well, it doesn't look like her. It doesn't look as good as horizon, but the game definitely looks good for what it actually is yeah. mm-hmm. so i so that's where i kind of think this landed at because i it just doesn't make sense that he would use that as a comparison himself i could see some interviewer basically try to compare True. the two knowing that it's not even in the same ballpark of what these games are going to actually be played as yeah yeah that that's exactly how i took it I, I i i i wasn't really insulted by it like he was saying that it was trash, you know, for developers, which is, you know, on their side, that's not really going to affect us. I think for right. the flying mechanics, I, I, I think it's just maybe like the, the actual mechanics of it. Maybe it's, 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 um, what's the word uh, I'm looking for? It's maybe it's just, just not as robust as he would like it to be. It might be just not as smooth at this point in time, but the game's not coming up for quite some time, so they can always tweak that. Now, the comment where he said that it doesn't look as good as Horizon, I wasn't insulted by that either. I, I it, yeah. it, Maybe he was asked, you know, how does it look compared to Horizon? Horizon is a very good-looking game, but it's it's not the same scope as yeah. um as a start as star starfield it's just it's just and not it's not even a fair and competition because they didn't no, they didn't but, ask to be put in that, that category. but he's but he's but he still said even though it doesn't look as good as that game it's still a good looking game so i think everyone should just you know pump the brakes wait right. to what we see at e3 and then make a judgment based off of that i think it's going to be a smash hit at the end of the year i think it's going to be a huge huge game man so i'm mm. i'm excited to see it at e3 well i got a poll in the chat everyone who voted uh, almost 500 votes on the poll. Will Xbox knock it out of the park at this year's E3? I told you we had about 10% of Sony guys watching. The 12% said no. About. I'm giving, I'm giving about. 2% leeway for Xbox guys that, that are disgruntled. Okay? So 12% say no. You should, you, should flip, you should put a call up for like how many people are excited for Ragnarok and see if they hit 100%. I, I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm excited for Ragnarok. <laughs> looks I like, know, I'm fucking super excited. Looks like good DLC, JK. I, I think I think everybody, <laughs> I think everybody in the chat is um, happy to wait to see Ragnarok. So yes. yeah, man. Well, they hmm. had an interesting report today on Ragnarok, and this is no way, way means uh, being mad at being like putting the game down. But they said that the, uh, for it not to be shown, it's not going to be shown anytime soon. And for a game to be released this year, I think by like August, you'd have to start to yeah, show. They- that game ain't no. coming this year, bro. Hmm. I, mean, I still think it's going to hit, but... As uh, much as I want that game to come this year, if that game is not announced or even shown by July, it's not coming yeah. this year. I agree. It, has to, it has to be announced. It has to be announced to have a release date before September because as much as people want to kind of say, well, Sony can release a game during the holidays, that hasn't been, they, that hasn't been something they've done in almost decades at this point the latest game that they released was 2018 which was spider-man now people are going to bring up something like what death are you talking about? they released uh ghost of tsushima last of us 2 no we're talking about during the holidays well to them all year's holiday motherfucker no it's not you tell me the last time they released it. you tell me the last time sony released a game between what october and january you hmm. tell me you know, I wonder one. why they don't do this. Maybe is it to avoid the big games like Call of Duty? I don't feel like they have to avoid. No, well, no, I said with the exception of Death Loop, but that was a third party game. Yeah, that's I'm saying like, well, I'm game. saying like, why don't they release during the holiday if that's the case? Less, and, less, less sales, I think, because yeah. even though even though Sony like is is lauded for their ex- their exclusives, them coming out the same time as those games, it's going to eat into some of the interest in their games. So I, I can understand a little bit of that strategy, but. If you really believe in your product, you know, and you want to be with the best of the best and see if you are the best of the best, you should compete well, with guess these what? games they, when they come out. Well, guess what? They believed in their product when it came to Horizon Field West and thought that it wasn't going to, um, like, suffer because of Elden Ring, and look what happened. 
<laughs> so it does so it so it really doesn't matter. It just comes down to some games are gonna actually perform better. People only got so much money in their pocket. Now Horizon is gonna end up probably still getting its sales in the long run, but that short term run, people picked up Elden Ring. And that's just the nature of what happens, and that happens tenfold during the holidays because people are doing more than just spending their money on games. They're spending it on Oh, a whole lot of stuff. So video games to so some people are like a secondary thing when it comes to that. So there's only so much money to go around. So Sony looks at it like we can release our games in February. We can release our God of War in April. I feel like they can release it whenever like they want that. and they'll well, be they fine. Can. Well, they can release it, but we're just going off of what they have been doing over the last generation. They The latest they released the game last generation was September. Why you got to be toxic for Listen, I'm not being toxic. I'm just giving you the actual facts. Hey, uh, no, nope, nope, you're toxic. And that somebody's going to clip that and say Forte hates Sony. Hey, hey, go ahead and uh, we got to give a shout out to 1,300 people watching live, guys. Hit the like button if you haven't. Let us know your thoughts in the chat. You guys are awesome. And obviously, we're going to get to the super chats here in, in a few minutes, guys. Thank you so much for the support, all the channel members. Dark CMF giving away even more games. And by the way, if you're winning these games, let us know that you're winning these games. I know uh, Tree Frog won one last week. I saw him reply. Uh, we want to know who's winning these games, definitely. We don't want the same motherfucker grabbing the codes over and over and over to either. So definitely uh, let us know. And by the way, this is Far Cry 6 running on Xbox Series X. Uh, pretty fun. Pretty fun co-op. I'm going to actually finish this game up here soon. Uh, but, Zachary, you want to help me uh, get through some of these here? Yeah, yeah. Give me two seconds. Yeah. I'm already going up. Uh, <laughs> so we got... We got Dark CMF, Sound Like a Pony 101, compare an unreleased game to Forgotten West for no reason, make blanket statements about an unreleased game without context. <laughs> Damn. Drawn TJ, drawn TJ Damn. by the way. Shout out to him, man. He's uh, he's an awesome guy. He says, hi, guys. Sorry <laughs> sorry for catching the live late. I'll listen to it tomorrow while I work. Everyone hit the like button. Shout out to you, Drawn TJ, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, we got B Doodle. He says, Fable gameplay right on the money dealer. Maybe some news on ABK deal. Oh, shit. I don't think we're gonna get any Activision Blizzard like stuff, but so far it's looking good. Like it might go through, which I'm excited. Let this for. man dream. I want to yeah, dream well, too. We'll talk about, <laughs> is that, is that, I, I, that's probably one of the subjects later. ABK. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely gonna. Okay. Well, we'll bring it up. Yeah, I'll talk about because yeah. I want to talk about it too. We have gone mad. He says my ship will handle like a turd, but be able to <laughs> hold all the stuff I can pick up in the universe. <laughs> Damn. Oh, shit is gone, man. Uh, we also got a uh, Danny Passion official. Let's go RDX dealer. Read this thumbs up to the panel. <laughs> Shout out to you, Danny. He's a director. Uh, got... He's making big things out there. Oh, we. Doctor, we you're putting us to sleep, man. Come on. Fuck. Shut up. <laughs> he said, Dark CMF, we got in honor of Xbox getting what looks like a truly sad dad Xbox OB. <laughs> Here's Martha in his dead <laughs> Xbox Series X global code. Thanks, man. Hey, he's talking about the picture Z- Obi-Wan watching his favorite park squirrel crawl under a mower. <laughs> yeah, has he freaking that little face when he zoomed in on it? Yep. <laughs> Far Cry 6. <laughs> Shout out to Obi. Uh, uh, we got Dub. He says, thanks for another great show. Question for the panel. What game would you like to see close the show? Looking forward to the RDX showcase reaction. Mm. Hey, look, don't think for a second that Xbox don't have something else up their sleeve that we don't know about. Of course they do, right? And I think, really, new IP, I think this is going to be one of the best generations in history for new IP. That was one of my criticisms of Xbox and and even Sony. They only had a few as well. uh, For new IP, I think guys should be making more and more new IP. You only got so much uh, leeway with some of these other IPs. So maybe they might, uh, you know, unveil a new IP. Or they could close with Starfield uh, gameplay. You just never know. But again, Dub, thank you very much, brother. I think they close, yeah, with something new. Like they closed with Redfall last year. That was new. Something new would be fucking great. Where yep. did where did where did Halo fall in it last year? What the second thing they show was Halo. Yeah, that, that's the funny thing. Halo and Starfield and all those games are like usually like in the middle of the show. Yeah, they don't. They tend not to close it out. They save like opening and closing <laughs> for like new shit. What was open last last year? Starfield, I think. Starfield open. Starfield, Starfield. Open. Yeah, remember the girls? Oh, yeah, that's really... because yeah, t- uh, Todd Howard came out on the um, st- yeah. came out. They had exclusive on the screen and on Todd's and forehead. He, he, and... He, 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 even though <laughs> ten minutes before it, the freaking leak came out and yeah. everyone was watching it before it freaking happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we got Hargi Chani. I think Sony avoids fall because of the Game Awards eligibility. Based on what has been said so far. 
Jaffe thinks Ragnarok is not releasing in 2022. That's a good uh, point, Hargi, um, okay. because we've all seen great games, and we've even talked about Halo uh, because that had a ton of hype and positivity at launch. Did I fall in order? Missing, you know, these windows where you could be in some kind of game awards. And that's why we say if it's game of the year 2021, you should be counting all the fucking games that come in 2021. And Jeff Keighley's come out yeah. and said, "Well, look, I don't get paid as much if I do that." Basically, this is what it came down to. So, yeah, maybe Sony do release their stuff a little bit early. And the closer to those awards, you know, a month before, you got all that mind share, right? Yeah. Uh, we got Ale- we got Alistair8. He says, been a lurker for a long time. Thanks for the great content. Also, shout out to D for helping me secure a Series X. Hell yeah. Shout awesome. out to Alistair. Thanks for Cheers. lurking, brother. Shout out to you, bro. Shout yeah, out man. To you. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Lurk. I'll just play. <laughs> Stupid. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Yeah, shout out to D, man. He's he's uh helping everybody get consoles on Twitter still. Follow him at D Batch on Twitter. Uh he helped me get a new graphics car recently. I actually saw that link and jumped on that. But uh and then we also got KY Bob. Remember for 31 months, shout out to him, man. He's got a new show every uh on his channel, right? So he's get game set live. I got it, KY Bob. See that? He says, I believe we will get a look at uh State of Decay 3 gameplay. At the end of the showcase. What's up, guys? Fire as usual. Thank you very much, sir. State of Decay 3. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that might be uh, that might be MIA That's a little for farther a little out, I think. Yeah, I think that's 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 going to be MIA. Same with uh, Everwild. A little, you know, <laughs> just chilling in the back, hanging out. Let this man yeah. dream. I want a dream. Trust me. I want anything that Rare makes, man. Just give me something. Yeah. All right. I've been well, playing Sea of Thieves like crazy. I played last night on the trash bag. Um, but yeah, that was just some. We just went over some Starfield in- information as Zacher chews on a, a can of Monster so he can wake the fuck up. And the obviously, fuck? we've got we've got because you got to get hyped for this next one. Embracer Group saved a bunch of these studios from obscurity, in my opinion. They buy a bunch of different developers. For three hundred million dollars, and honestly, it got it just brings a lot of comparisons to the to the the Bungie deal that was a complete ripoff, in my opinion. Uh, but they get what do they get for three hundred million Zalker, and what do those studios make, and why is this kind of a good thing? So it's the Crystal Dynamics and the Eidos Montreal, and it's about like I think it's like forty five or fifty IPs. Jesus they, yeah, fifty fifty IPs. Like, don't sale. get me wrong. A lot of them, a lot of them are not like crazy big IPs. It's like Tomb Raiders, like the probably the biggest one, and then a couple other ones like Deus Ex, um, and then Thief. They put like Thief, Thief as one of the big ones. I'm like Thief, seriously. Thief. Anyways, so yeah, Thief. Uh, but Crystal <laughs> Dynamics and all of them, like for 300 million, they added about I think 1,100 developers to the uh, you know the store to their basically their Embracer group, which is great. And um, I don't know. I don't think this is a I think this is kind of a cool little thing where the Western like team moved out of what Square Enix was doing. They've been wanting to get rid of them for a while, it looks like. And it's because like Edios Montreal like hasn't been profitable like in the last five years. Like they've had like a zero point six three percent like profit margin. Which I think is management, you know, management like, is misusing, misplacing money. You know, I think it's getting swallowed up by those guys. Well, but. I think I think it's also the Marvel licenses. Like they probably paid a shit ton to use those, but also it's just like when you look at Marvel's Avengers, right, with Crystal Dynamics, that thing freaking fell on its face. And so there's a there's a lot of things that are going into this, and that's why they're getting rid of them. And then of course, like comparison it to to Sony's Bungie buyout, which I think was insane, four billion for one IP and basically one studio. They didn't even get IP, sir. Stop it. <laughs> they didn't. They, they got Destiny. They, no, they didn't. Well, then they didn't get Destiny. But they didn't get they, anything but but consulting fees. They paid three billion dollars to consult. That's look, they look. Got. They, they ultimately own, and they can they can change out the management over there at Bungie and decide oh God, what Bungie dude. does in the long run, but. Ultimately, they they own Bungie now, and they own Destiny, and okay, that's Destiny. basically okay. all they got. Forte, that's all they got. They get, well, until you show me some documentation saying that they actually got that, then I, I check your email. I just sent it to you, bro. Yep, okay. just sent it to you. We have the full files and everything. You'll be all right. Shout out to Killer <laughs> Crash and me wrong. <laughs> uh, look, look, so, look, Sony bought Bungie, bitch. Stop being upset over that. Motherfucker, they didn't buy. They they bought consulting rights. Don't be <laughs> mad about Bungie getting bought. You tell me Sony actually is sitting... Look, Bungie actually sits above PlayStation. They're actually more valuable than PlayStation is. Well, somebody clip this man. Hey, listen, man. It's not my fault that Bungie got put next to Sony as an incendiary <laughs> over PlayStation. A, an incendiary? <laughs> what did I say? Incendiary? Oh, yeah. Like they, like they eviscerated. It's just bursting the flames? Yeah, 
Basically, look, yeah, Forte. What I'm trying to say up. is, don't be upset because Bungie is bought up by Sony. This bitch up, like it's yeah. literally says, like yeah. who is Bungie owned by? Literally in the files, it says acquisition a- and, acquired and, and, by Sony Interactive and, Entertainment, and, and, bro. Sony, and can, Sony, can Sony do what they want to do with those games? Absolutely not. Eventually, they will. Eventually, no, they can. we're talking about right now. Right now, there are no games. There's only- right now, oh my god, <laughs> it's Destiny Two Forte. Move, move, you know it well. More. Like like I said, they. Square Enix got a, I mean, the um, Embracer got a bunch of IPs out of this. They got three studios. They accumulated the debt that those games, uh, those studios have occurred. You know, studios like uh, what's the name had what two? They lost what two hundred million dollars on Crystal uh, Dynamics. The, yeah, on the Avenger game. And guess what? Embracer basically ate all of that debt up for because them. Because Embracer what, Group is massive. Like real quick, Zucker, yeah. for people that don't know, explain quickly explain what Embracer Group is and how they're going to take over the world. Well, Embracer Group is like if you looked at one of the graphs that are out there, Embracer Group owns like a hundred studios or some shit. Like they own a lot <laughs> of ridiculous. studios. They're they're ridiculous. Embrace you group. And they're just like, we're gonna embrace everyone. And so <laughs> when everybody talks about like, you know, FTC and all this monopoly shit, you better go look at Embracer Group because they bought so many people. They own not only big studios, right? They own smaller studios. They own like everything. Like they're mm-hmm. just going out buying shit and just like, yeah, go make what you want to make and blah blah blah. And Crystal Dynamics and Idios are just one of those teams that are going to be going in there. And I, I don't noticed, know if you guys saw I noticed also, that old JC Poo didn't have a fucking a damn problem with this. Jay, you mean yeah. you that mean orc that Schreiber? escaped from Lord of the Rings? Jason Schreiber? Oh. Yeah, he didn't have a damn oh, problem. Oh, Zuglug? He didn't have a damn problem with this. And, and what you know, some something that I didn't, I don't think, basically this tells us that the, um, Eidos Montreal is not making a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy, right? No, which which are. fucking sucks, man, because that's such a good game. Guardians of the Galaxy was such a great game last year, and this tells us uh, they're they're working on the what is that Deus Ex uh, IP again, right? I don't think so. I what do they think say they Deus were? Ex, dude, Deus Ex didn't sell well either. That's the problem. Like everything that they've made just doesn't like it's fucking well. Like Deus Ex is fucking awesome. Anybody that hasn't played those games, you need to play them. They're freaking great. And that's the thing. Like, they make all these great, well-made games. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy is so well-made. And it's just like, they just don't sell for some damn reason. Mm. It's like, I think it's either marketing, management, something's up. And that's, and Chris I think they do sell, and Square Enix, Square Enix is constantly disappointed. And uh, I think Ace I mean, I, 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 I was looking at the sales for Crystal Dynamics, right? So the first Tomb Raider sold almost 15 million units. And they were still disappointed. First one. And no, and they were very happy with that. And then the second one went down to 11. And then the third one, Shadow Tomb Raider, went down to eight. So it's like a trend of just like, all right, why the yeah, fuck is it going they, down? But they said that they over just the, what did they say? Just the um, new um, definitive versions of, of Tomb Raider that got remade. It's like 88 what million copies mm-hmm. sold across all platforms. Yep. I, think that's, I think that's winning, bro. And but, even eight know, million, that's a wait, success. And million, if you can't make money on eight million, like that's eight, a fucking eight, problem. Yeah, they put out a chart saying there was 88 million sold of all those games across all platforms. Across all all Tomb Raiders? All no, across just the remakes. The yeah, remakes. I think uh, I think Tomb Raider is one of their successful IPs. The other ones that you guys mentioned are not. Uh Square Enix, uh um, yeah. you know the uh the Eidos one um uh the Gal- Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy, which actually has been doing well in Game Pass, I heard. But uh, yeah, if for some reason those IPs never really um, like do sex, that that should have been like a huge hit. It didn't seem to really uh, move the needle. Dub says it perfectly. Still can't believe they sold for three hundred million, million since nineteen eighty-eight million since nineteen ninety-six, bro. It's all okay. So it's all, all, it's all yeah, not not just the. I was about to say like, goddamn, dude, that's like. That's like some fucking. That's, that's still a ton. Oh, they Overwatch. Said, well, they said, that's well, they bigger, said that's bigger than Overwatch, bro. Well, they like, what the, the fuck? Well, they said, okay, so the remakes by themselves, the trilogy reboot, still did thirty-eight million. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Let me get this straight. So that's a how, lot. Much, how much? How much did they pay? Three hundred million. Yep. Three hundred yes. million. How much did Sony pay for Bungie? <laughs> Three point six. Just catch it up. <laughs> Three point six I'm billion. You, Welcome you, to the man. conversation. They, 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 oh they, but according, gosh. but according to Forte, they don't own. They don't. They own. don't. They, they they get they get consulting rights. That's what they get. You're yeah, they, they, they. No, they. You're fraud. 
No, they, they get they, consulting they, rights. Go ahead, D D back. Go go ahead and tell them the truth, man. They get consulting rights. D Bad, you're a businessman. I expect nothing but honesty from you. No, go ahead. No, oh shit, them, he turned them. it on you for No, no, no. What okay, they you they tell them, them that they're allowing them to do their own thing, so they're not changing their 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 course, Wait. their course, right? So they can oh, still be oh, right. multi plots and whatnot, but in essence, they own them. And in the long okay. run, they can they can replace the management hype of Bungie and determine <laughs> what the fuck they want to do with their own studio. Own it, it, it. It's silly and naive to think that Sony won't eventually decide everything that that studio does or where those games go. Okay. They will eventually. This is the only, the only studio I ever know to find themselves to get out of every major publishing deal that they've been in since they've been in interception. First, they left Microsoft. Then they left Activision. Don't think they won't do the same thing to well, Sony. If Sony does, I think Sony owned all Sony of them, though. Cool. Like, the yeah, other, other companies didn't own all of them. Microsoft yeah. owned all of them, too, at one point, too. Mm, yes. Yeah, yes, they did. But, but that yeah. was kind of a different era. Oh, no, come on. It's the same Bungie. The same people are at the top of Bungie. They're at the top of Bungie now. Same people. Look, me bash your businessman already spoke, okay? So okay. I'm going to need you to you calm the fuck down. You, I, think, I, think in this, I, I think in this situation, to be honest, the, the okay. money that Sony paid for them, they're not going to let them go. If anything, they okay. can say piss off and go start their own thing, I guess. But okay. the, 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 their IPs and their workers, they belong to Sony, but I believe they have something that's written there that allows them to still be them in that sense, and we just gotta hope, yeah. at least for Bungie's yeah. sake, that who Sony put that, that holds there, that to, to high regard and lets them do their own thing, but who, who, who technically, that, Sony that owns them. You absolutely right. Hell, Forte, shit, fuck! No, no, he's, you're absolutely uh, right, but who put that in that clause? Who put that in there to say that Santa they Claus, no one gives a fuck. Next no, topic. Nobody, well, you're the one that started this whole conversation. Yeah, and Don't I'm run away from it, it now. Dana, so we're moving forward. I want. I, I want to make a point. Uh, one of the things that this is with the um, Square Enix uh, Crystal Dynamics thing was what came out of this too was that the big rumor that I think was bouncing about by Greg Miller and then Jeffrey Grubb also said uh, <laughs> he actually said it was was Sony buying uh, uh, the other Enix, half, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, they didn't so want that, they didn't want the Western studios. They wanted just the Japanese They didn't want the good studios. studios. They, didn't yeah, want they, the good they wanted they wanted the studios uh right, Tim? They wanted the studios that had like the Final Fantasy MMO, the subscriptions, the cloud based right. stuff and all the but, JRPGs. Yeah, yeah they so can that's have them. Still on the table, but if that you know, who knows if that's ever gonna so happen. So whatever happened to the, like right three or four part. weeks ago, there's supposed to be a giant announcement and like people move their podcast for it and that just never happened. You mean from software joining them too? <laughs> yeah. you, mean, you mean you mean everybody being bought by Sony somehow and uh, all this stuff? It's like oh, I don't know. Man. Hey, shout out to everybody watching. We got almost thirteen hundred people here. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Let us know your thoughts down below. We got so many awesome people in the chat. We want to give everyone a shout out. We'll get us some super chats here in a bit. But honestly, let us know what you think about the Embracer Group purchase they uh i think they ran away with a steal man 300 million for all these ip i think Eidos Ido, montreal with the creation of guardians of the galaxy i think that's their a team now i mean it was that good to me and and anything they are making going forward i will consider buying it even if, i'm not a fan of deus ex well, bleh, deus ex but i will buy it probably if they if they make another one because i think they've got some kind of new creative director over there in the last several years or something because guardians i don't think could have been done by the same guy that did the previous game i just don't like it was just so well executed uh just such a great experience man so i don't know let us know what you think 300 million one second one second one second yeah. embracer group how many studios do they own 128 so, <laughs> no, where's all this monopoly talk huh d bash already all mentioned that damn it because- well, that's okay, because sorry. they're all. I, 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 I just not watching. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's because all those games can still be third party, so they really don't. I guess it just doesn't hit the radar like that. It's not a first party publisher owning them. Yeah, well, either way, it's uh. Well, what do you guys think? Okay, so this is a question I actually have. What do you guys think about um, Crystal Dynamics is still working with um? It, the initiative when it comes to their game they came out with the press release said they're still going to be doing that and perfect um, art and perfect yeah with perfect art and they is rumored that microsoft paid a million a hundred million dollars for that exclusivity when it came to rise of the tomb raider for that year so what's the chances that the embracer group at some point especially if this um 
this Perfect Dark game really, really hits hard, and they had a lot to do with it, that Microsoft could go in and actually just purchase them directly away from them for more money than Embracer probably paid for all of that together. I would just poach those damn employees, you know? Yeah. Go ahead and move on in. They like money. They like money, so... Well, yeah. I'm just thinking because at that point, mm-hmm. it'd be as much as you point. want to po- as much as you would want to just post those people, like you said. I think that would be something that they could actually get the IP out of them too. Like I said, if if yeah. if they if they take Crystal yeah. Dynamic off their hands and say we'll give you the five, you know, three hundred plus another two, and we don't know, we're not going to count their money and see how they're going to do it. But if they do, if this game takes off due to the fact that. Um, the, due to the fact that Crystal Dynamic definitely helped with it, I think that puts a um, really strong emphasis behind Microsoft trying to acquire them um, directly. But you got to remember, great- Crystal Dynamics oh. is the, right now they are just a chunk of manpower that's doing exactly what the head of the yeah. studio, which has always been the same guy, is telling them to do. Been, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with dealer here, man. Poach them. Poach them. Poach them. From if you look at what Xbox has been doing the last three to four years. I don't think they're going after one studio anymore. I don't think they're going after just poaching one person or making a new studio. They've obviously learned that making a new studio takes for fucking ever. Look how long it's taking for, you know, Playground to get that Fable team up, right, and running and getting the game out. Look how long it's taking for Crystal. Like, you know, they need Crystal Dynamics for the initiative. From what we've seen, it's Bethesda, right? Already established leaders, already established team, already established everything. Activision Blizzard, already established team, everything. So I don't know if they're going to be going. The only other team I can see them going for and everybody was saying this right like oh they're going for these people working with third party but the only other team i see is certain affinity that's the only other team i see that they will bring in because they have 250 people and if they make an entire game like that br by themselves that's Mm -hmm. a big test of like trust to them and then they have to support that br Mm -hmm. so that's the only team i can see them going after other than that, I see them going after publishers, man. I see them going after like <laughs> WB. Like, dude, that's all they've been fucking doing the hey, last three years. I want to give a shout out to uh, not MBG in the chat. <laughs> we got, oh my we got Sycamore. Yeah. We got X Coin with the beers. We got Slendipers, KY Bob, Q. It's Timmy. Shout out to you, buddy. As well as uh, Amit, Amit Kumar, Ziong, uh, and so many others in the chat. Let us know your thoughts in the chat uh, about all this stuff, man. I think it's a steal. Zach, you want to grab these super chats we, we haven't gotten and we can move forward here and get into some of these leaks and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Give me two <laughs> seconds. Scroll up. Pixel bit G, yeah. shout out to you. We got Donnie. He, uh, we got Hargi Chani. He says, Embracer Group owns a lot of indie studios along with a few larger ones, but they're only worth about $7 billion. Damn. I'd rather get Ubisoft though. I'm just saying. Mm. Uh, we got <laughs> we got Risk It. He said, Schreier should change his name to crier clip clock <laughs> oh shit uh, we got oh, wow. chinook guy he says embrace group just bought dark horse a little while ago dark horse also make halo comics and books yeah and they're also dark horse well, is dark a massive horse, yeah. comic industry that has you know like hellboy and the bprd stuff in there yeah. which are fucking awesome comics and i i want to see a hellboy game man there's so much rich lore there like somebody mm. signed that shit um we also got splendiferous uh, Forte did not raise his hand, and he's being toxic. <laughs> Forte does not own his hand, even though it's attached to him. He doesn't own it. Somebody else mm-hmm. owns it, and they tell him what to do with that hand. Space yeah. Nova King, stuff. shout out to you, buddy, bud, the cyborg. Uh, yeah. Is there is there any other we can move forward? Yeah, man, that's all we got. That's all we got. You got Chinook so, guy, right? You didn't fuck him over? I got Chinook time? guy. I didn't fuck him over. Chinook right. guy never do that. You, so you called him Chinaki guy last time, right? I called him Shiitake Mushroom. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> Janaki guy. Hey, it's a new Xbox update, by the way. Uh, lets you create, uh, <laughs> create, and uh, share via oh, new, view stories in the Xbox app and more, as well as create and view activity feeds, content with uh, studios in the Xbox app. So it's just it's adding more functionality to both the PC app, and the iOS app, I do believe. I don't know. Is it me or can you not connect to your damn Xbox account if you're not on the same Wi-Fi as the damn Xbox with the app on the phone? Is that how it works? Wait, what do you mean? Like, like when, uh, when I'm to... when I'm not home and I click on the Xbox app, right, and I'm I'm like, what's going on on Xbox? Uh, it it never shows me anything that's happening. It said like an error pops up or something. But if I'm on my on my, on my network that my Xbox is on, then I can log into the Xbox app and and see all that. Maybe that's a privacy setting I got to change. Yeah, you got to change something so. in your settings because yeah. I've taken my tablet, my Samsung tablet, and I haven't been home or I was somewhere else, and I've connected directly to my Xbox and streamed mm, and yeah. played my games that were installed on my Xbox. I've done that multiple times. 
Um, and yeah, so it's pretty awesome. Well, uh, I just wanted to throw it out there real quick. They are kind of uh, making more strides on the app front and adding more customization there. Activision Blizzard shareholders approve Microsoft acquisition. I know we've heard a lot about this, but this is uh, actual stuff that's being voted on and, and passed pretty unanim- unanimously. Uh, Zalker, did you see this topic in here where more than 98% of share voters, uh, yeah, they, they were approving this shit and saying it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah, the the shareholders approved it. Ninety uh, percent of them did, like dealer just said. Uh, Warren Buffett put a bet that basically he thinks it's going to go through. Um, there's a lot of talk that you know this deal's looking pretty good, and that you know a lot of people don't want the FTC basically apparently doesn't want to go to court if something that they feel that they don't have a good shot at winning. Yeah, and yeah. so like because they because you know they have a lot of they have resources right. It costs money to go. And so they don't want to put resources to, towards something they think they're going to lose. And then not to mention, Microsoft is more than willing to go to court because they're like, fuck it, man. Like, and there was no proof that they were anyway. ever going to try to do that shit anyway or even try to shoot no, it down no, no. even. No, but no. I, I think, think Zork is right on the money um, from all the stuff that I've heard too. And, and we obviously we all talk too, but um, yeah, they're willing to fight if it goes down that way. And FTC, as he said, uh, Supposedly, they, they, if they go to court, they're gonna lose. That's that I basically was told that uh, from a good source. Like, there's there's no way FTC is gonna win that that this in court. So I think FTC kind of knows that, or they they they're gonna have a good idea. They're just not gonna waste money and resources on something like this. Maybe there's some stuff that they put in there for COD, possibly uh, some some stuff where she flexes her muscles. contingencies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. but I I really uh, for the first time. Um, really feel strongly, and the stock's up also three dollars. Uh, since the Buffett gave his injection, basically what happened was, uh, Schreier came out with an article. He said that uh, Wall Street's betting against it, and I had heard similar stuff like it's fifty fifty, but the investors were really just it just the market itself has been down, and everything's trending down. But um, when that happened, uh, that kind of ruffled some feathers. Hogue Law uh, basically called out Jason and, <laughs> and, uh, and said, you know, uh, that's not true. I'm in the industry. It's, a, it's trending 70-30. And uh, Jason, in his uh, ultimate fish, blocked the guy. Um, but uh, Hogue made a video, and, and it made its rounds through, I could say, some, some pretty big people. And, and, and they agreed with what he said. Um, and then right after that, Buffett basically says, hey, I'm going to put $9 billion that this is going to go. And ever since then, the stock's been up $3. And all the stuff that we just, Z- Zorker outlined, came out too through the, through the back end. Like, they're ready to fight. If, they, if, if it goes that way um, and they're going to lose uh, FTC, it doesn't really have a case. They're so what you're like- saying is Warren Buffett... Is probably a lot better at this than an, a trash journalist uh, like uh, yeah. Jason. Yeah, so and I mean, money where his mouth is. I mean, it's so Six funny because he literally came out with a headline that obviously was designed by design. It was what it right. was. Just like when, uh, just like with uh, Halo, right? Jason's article about three four three and the development of Halo. We know that the title was one of two things, depending on how the meta score came in, depending on how the reception was around the game. He was either going to frame it like three four three ruined Halo, blah blah blah, or since the, since it was positive stuff around Halo, it was how three four three saved Halo, blah blah blah. Like he he's very opportunistic in that way, and unfortunately Warren Buffett had a, a big old bitch smack ready to go because uh, he knows about this shit a lot better than someone like Jason. So again, when you when you go around and you block people you never even talk to. This is kind of what you get. Nobody gives you the benefit of the doubt. Nobody gives a fuck about what you're saying no more. And you've been so wrong on the PlayStation stuff already. All the PS5 games are going to be exclusive. All the shit he was saying. Um, and they weren't going to be, be be on PS4. I mean, he ran with a lot of shit. So, ultimately, I think he's got a few sources here and there. But here lately, man, he's being getting crushed. And can I, can I say that, like, Blizzard hasn't been quiet either. Like, Blizzard and Activision, like, they're talking about the new Call of Duty. They're talking, like... Blizzard just announced that new Warcraft mobile game, uh, Drift or whatever it's called. Uh, and then there's just like other stuff like WoW's coming out, new expansion. They're just talking about a lot of stuff. And 
it just gets me excited. I just want to see what else they have in, like in store for everything. I want to I want to see this deal get through. Like if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, nothing's a hundred percent right. But if it does happen, man, I'm just excited. Yeah, I'm I just, just I'm just like Blizzard. I get tired of seeing tweets from people like we you know like we just talked about that are constantly trying to cast doubt into stuff. Like shut up about it already. Just if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. That's what I said on Twitter. Like personally, if, if it goes through or not, I'm not gonna die either way. But if yeah. you know, just let it happen if it's going to happen, and if not, you know, it, it, it won't. This. But it will. You know, we all know that. I say this. I think it's pretty much going to go through. And also, too, people are like, you know, it's so retarded. These guys are sorry. It's so <laughs> D-Bash's so... opinions and words do not reflect that of RDX <laughs> podcast. I don't even know what he said. Go back. Go so ahead, D-Batch. Damn it! You've been it, doing this for five years. Fuck. Yeah, it's just. Come on, man. Like, guys are, like, <laughs> tweeting senators and saying, hey, block the deal. And I got to say, it's, like, for not, because Microsoft, really, at the end of the day, they got pretty good standing in uh, in, in politics. You know, they, they do a lot of stuff. And I, I just don't really seeing a lot of people opposing this deal once all the details come out. I think it's going to go through. And um, I think it's, it's good for Xbox gamers. I think if you're really worried about it, just be patient and just a, ignore all the noise and... I think by the end of the year, we're probably going to hear an announcement that this is going through. Well, we will see. Ultimately, I'd like to know what the chat thinks. Uh, it's pretty 98% of the stockholders were voting. We got to give a shout out to over 1,300 people watching this live. Guys, if you haven't hit the like button, tell the, tell the buddies you about the show. We're getting into some of the final topics. By the way, Halo Season 2 Lone Wolves hit. And, uh, man, we were in a party with uh, the Ashen one earlier. <laughs> the Ashen Luca. And sound like a... <laughs> Just a, a mouse in there yelling and get pissed off. She was so pissed because the damn game wasn't giving her progress towards the battle pass. Like, there's some issues here and there. The, you know, I don't know. I don't, I haven't played it yet. I probably won't play Halo Infinite again until the damn co-op drops. But uh, season two is launching. Is there any kind of general the new map, reception the, the out new there? New map is fucking. The new map is fucking sick. I was playing the uh, new well, mode. Luca, that, Luca was playing four v four on it, and she was like, "This fucking map is so huge. Like, it's not oh, the really? right." Size. I was playing. I was playing uh, the new mode that like people people were calling the BR mode. I forgot the name, but it's not a BR. But it's really cool. You get like five lives. You level up as you kill. You get like new guns as you go. So you hold like you know X to level up, and then when you level up, you get a new gun, and then your nice. gun that you had goes down, and then you just keep going, and you have five lives, and it's basically the last part. It's the last part in standing. That's so it's nice. just the last person starting. So yeah, I was having a lot of fun with it, man. Like that map was fucking insane. I just thought it was so cool looking. So. I played a couple games in there and just was having a good time, man. I know, I know Halo traditionally multiplayer is like, the, you know, smaller maps, but I got to say, I enjoy the bigger ones, man. It's just, I think the smaller maps, I'm just kind of used to it over time and just it's kind of a little boring at times. I just like the, the bigger maps and maybe for playing Call of Duty for so many years with these big maps, I think it's just refreshing to have big maps on Halo and I think they should do more of them, man. I'm happy uh, to, yeah, hey, also, Lu good, Luca right? wasn't backing out of the game uh, before the the match ended, just so you guys know. So, uh, you know, Donnie, uh, just so you know, yeah, she was she was doing everything right. It just wasn't working for her. I'm not sure what was up. They with were that. having server problems. They were uh, having server problems when it first launched. Man, like a bunch of like sure. influx of people, I guess, and they were just having server problems. But from what I played, I played a little bit today during uh, lunch, and I it was good, man. I enjoyed it. Mm. I thought it was a lot of fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to go back and play it again, but with like people. But it's a free for all, so it's like last man standing. And so, yeah, the, the new map's cool looking. At least I think there's how many new maps? Like two, three, <laughs> two new maps. Two new maps. So one of them I thought was really cool looking. Mm. Well, oh, Zachar, we're we're moving on to our final topic, which is going to be quite interesting. Before we do that, grab the super chats, man. I'll give a few shout outs uh, to some of the people in the chat. Start with Jedi Knight Peter. Shout out to him, as, as well as Assassin Lupa, Boba Fett Gaming, and so many others. Toolman Fifty Five, Yo Donnie, and uh, too many others in the chat to count. You guys are amazing. Thank you for watching. This is Zachar ready yet? I can shout out yeah. some more. Okay, go ahead. We got we got Tech Money. He says Xbox should poach devs like. BGS did Human Head. <laughs> oh, you're fuck? talking about like, uh, yeah, that 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 studio that's kind of staying quiet. That one that joined back in 2020 or 2019, mm. where Zenimax bought them, mm -hmm. and so they've been just building and doing their own thing. And they were a AAA studio, and then they've been they've been quiet. They've been quiet for a very long time. Uh, so we got Stop Madness. He said Xbox really needs to go after WB. They need to go after those licenses. Um, 
Yeah, they they're tied got, up with the uh, Activision thing now, so who knows? Yeah, it's not. It's gonna be a while before we hear anything. Uh, Yodani says, Gene Park and others chimed in that the PSZ lots have ruined the community and tried jumping him behind the dumpster of the Panda Express. <laughs> What the fuck? Is that that guy I replied to where he's like, I'm going to reconsider saying things about Sony because these guys, and I told them, don't reconsider anything. If you do that, then they win. Uh, is that the, the guy, the um, media guy you're talking about? Let, let I, me know I, in the I chat. What he's talking about. Uh, we also got tech money again. He says, FTC cares about Game Pass price increase, not exclusives. Maybe. Uh, by know. the way, Brutal in the chat, uh, co-op probably be around August. Oh my God! Hargi Chani says, "I'd like to report a crime, Jason. No more tweets for you, Schreier. <laughs> See if game on daily." <laughs> uh, so you to, guys are you guys are going hard? Shout out to game uh, on Dark daily. CMF. If you're not blocked by Schreier already, tweet him about RDX. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, or, it's uh, or asking or asking why he doesn't like Xbox on Twitter. Shout out to Matt. Yeah, pretty much. That's it. Yeah, I'm Ma- legit yeah, Matt. Uh, fun speculation asked him. Why he didn't like Xbox on Twitter? Because we've got to remember, Jason is known for basically being a Sony shill. Like, everyone knows that. And he just asked him, hey, why why don't you like Xbox? Just even jokingly, even if he was joking, like, and he got blocked for that. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. And uh, it was nuts, bro. Sorry, and then he goes on other shows, like, uh, you know, he went on a couple of shows that, that are good shows, and, and he's like, if anybody wants to really talk to me, just hit me up in a in a yeah. DM and we'll and we'll, we'll straighten it out. Yeah, okay. Block, yeah, block, yeah. block, block. Yeah, fucking right. You blocked Hog Law just because he knew Come what the on. fuck he was talking about. Just because he called him a YouTube pundit. Yeah. Listen, I, unless someone it's like, gets what, like, what is that compared to Jay's a YouTube pundit? Like, what do you you get paid to write shit? Like, shut the fuck up. This is this unless is someone. Deals. This is what he does. I unless mean, someone this, gets like blatantly racist with me or or just like really really out of pocket i rarely block somebody people should be able to to disagree and and have debates respectfully and if it's being done respectfully i don't see any problem with it this guy seems really really sensitive like i see guys posting all the time i don't even know this guy and he blocked me like uh, like i've never even gone any of his posts and he he blocked me or <laughs> whatever like he's pre he he preempts his blocks. Blocks. like he just sees like the xbox logo and like blocks you like <laughs> come on like have have thicker skin man have debates with people if they're being respectful and and if you stand on what you say say what you say and that's it and let it be let it ride but it ain't even a debate he, he'll he block people that have never even heard of him or talked to him um well, so it, yeah i don't want to stay it. on him forever i want to move forward because we are getting a long in the tooth here, I'm but uh, shout out to Jose. Shout out to Jose in the super talk. chat or in the chat, man. Uh, yeah, I saw that on Twitter. But hey, we're going to move forward, man. We got another final topic again, guys. If you're watching, we appreciate you. Thanks for sticking around as we do move into some of these leaks that have recently hit from uh, who's this guy? What's his name? Skolzy? I'm just yep. now hearing about him, but apparently he's leaked some stuff accurately in the past. Uh, so take this for, with a grain of salt. Uh, but that he's leaking stuff about Elder Scrolls, Cinemax Online's new game, Quake. We've also got Spy Team, uh, Elder Scrolls, and Fallout Remasters, which I don't know. That's kind of weird. We'll talk about that, as well as increasing workloads over there at Bethesda. We can start one after the other, uh, Zalker, and I know you were very in tune with some of the stuff we were talking about earlier, but Elder yep. Scrolls Six. what exactly is he saying is going on with Elder Scrolls Six, and when can, when can we expect this game? Yeah, so he was talking about Elder Scrolls Six. I made a video about this on Monday. He's saying that it's going to be set in Hammerfell, which is an area. If you've like kind of read some books, the Skyrim is pretty big. There's going to be a lot of, a big political system with like marriages, betrayals, factions that matter in the game, and it's going to change against your story. Um, that's what he was kind of talking about. There's not going to be any dragons in it. It's in full development right now, but yet and still in the early stages. And the target release is 2025 to 2026. So hmm. it's a little far out, which if you look at the timetable, that seems about right. For like, Remember, we saw games. we saw the in-engine, whatever the hell it was, of Elder Scrolls Six, like in 2019 or 18, or when was that? Six, uh, 17? I think it was 20, you're right, I think it was 2019. It was right before the pandemic, because 2020, they didn't have anything. It might have been earlier than hot. that, man, but yeah, probably, they, they showed something. Probably the Starfield team, that's once they're done with Starfield, We'll start going to full production on the Elder Scrolls. Mm-hmm. I think they well, have two I don't, teams. I don't know like about they that, have man. a Starfield team and a uh, Elder Scrolls team, and I don't think they're fucking with Fallout no more. They're going to pass that off to probably in Exile or somebody. But 
Uh, right. They have, they've always had two teams kind of rotating, and they might inherit one another as they do get uh, ramped up on projects. I, I don't think they're going to – like like what he said here, how there's going to be people going – like Xbox is kind of flooding them with stuff, right? Like giving them more resources with the workload. Um, if you remember Todd Howard a few months ago when he had a Ryan McCaffrey interview, he was talking I about – I like 30 how, FPS. Ah, oh, fucking kill me. <laughs> uh, when he was saying – he also – well, you know, outside of that shit, clip that out uh he talked about basically how having a elder scrolls at 15 years right it's just not a good thing like leaving ip sitting there like elder scrolls for so long doesn't seem ideal so maybe they are you know todd howard could overlook it but maybe they're they are handing those kind of franchises off giving it to other people to work on them so i mean i know 100 percent they're years. they're giving some of their ip out to other teams to work on like for example, Fallout. Like I think they exactly. are done with Fallout, and they've replaced that with Starfield, and they're going to do Starfield and Elder Scrolls at least for now, right? Uh, and they've held handed Fallout off to another team. I had heard a long time ago and talked about it in the video. I heard In Exile was working on a Fallout game forever ago, and if you remember, some of the guys that started In Exile were some of the guys that Interplay that actually made the Fallout IP at, before they sold it to Bethesda. So Xbox owned the original creators of Fallout. They then bought uh, the guys that bought the IP from the original creators of Fallout, and they can hand that back off to the guys that are also owned at Xbox oh. and, and, and make remember, the game now. It's it's kind of crazy. I remember the, there's that rumor that Obsidian's making uh, Fallout New Vegas 2. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so the Fallout IP is just kind of going out, and maybe they're making the Fallout games, you know, at in exile, kind of like a strategy game, you know, or how they're... You, you know, RPG strategy game, who knows? And then that's, that's, you know, another part of the, the thing is that there's a four time strategy, like the elder scrolls game, um, four time strategy games are like civilization. Or if you've seen gladius, uh, warhammer, that's another game. That's like that. I love those type of games. Four time fun. strategy. Yeah. I'll kill you. It's fun. <laughs> what about the <laughs> Zenimax online project? That's going to be, Oh dude, that's the Mando Mandalorian MMO. So mm -hmm. a lot of people have been talking about this. This was like leaked like last year, how everybody thought if you remember last year, I think it was Jess said that Xbox is going for kind of IPs. They're going for known IPs. And then all of a sudden it was like Indiana Jones and all these other big, like, you know, IPs that people know. Yeah. So maybe star Wars is one of those IPs. Cause it, it falls into that Lucas games, right? That Lucas art games place with Indiana Jones. They are That's licensing their IP out to be made by uh, some other teams. And then, and then yeah. quake as well there. You say that according to this, they're going to be bringing out another quake, which we have obviously been, they've kind of alluded to that and hinted at that before. So that's completely believable. D Id tech, right? So yep. Id tech's making that apparently. So like, we'll see if that's like all of this, right? Huge grain of salt. But if anybody's seen like the lore, I made a video about this months ago, but the lore of quake is insane. Like there's freaking hammers, swords, <laughs> dragons, <laughs> like, bro. It's fucking cool. Like if you could like take like first person melee to the next level, it is the team to do that. Right. So, like, yeah, there's going to be guns and stuff, but, like, imagine, like, swords and fucking crazy shit, mythical shit going on. Like, it's insane what the Quake shit can do. Like, that whole franchise, like, reimagine like they did with Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, which Doom Eternal is one of the best shooters ever made. Yep. Like, like, come on, man. Like, that sounds fucking awesome. Hey, I got to do a shout-out to Papa Baco 72 man. Good to see you in the chat, only on Xbox. Dr. Dinglenut, <laughs> Jedi Knight Peter as well as Brutal and uh, Bio, Biodread. Shout out to you, buddy. But we've also got some, not just um, Quake, but we've also got, did they give any dates on or windows for ZeniMax or the Quake stuff? No, I mean, it Tech is like, I think it's like three years out. So like maybe we'll see something about that in like a year. Or I'm two. not asking uh, if what you think, Zalker. I'm asking for the, if they gave a date, damn it. No, there's no date. Bitch. Okay, fuck. So the only the, thing that had a date was the Elder Scrolls 2025. So what? Okay, so Spy Team. This is a Spy Kids game. There. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I, dude, it's like a it's like a multiplayer. It's like a multiplayer game. That's all that it is. It, that's all that they're saying that it is, or at least leaked it is. And it's uh, uh Bethesda Game Softworks Austin and Montreal working on it. Hmm. And this has been something that's been talked about. I've before, reported and on it Spy also, Team. Yeah. Yeah, and it also just got a, a filed uh, for a LLC or some file document for 2022. Like that just happened. Spy team did. Mm -hmm. So they just filed something like that. And so that yeah, that's probably being made too if it's being filed. I remember talking about that recently. And then the weird thing is they said In Exile is working on a Elder Scrolls and Fallout remaster. 
Yeah, that's that's in exile working on that. That's so why what the, would I mean that's that's what I'm saying. Like, why not contract something like that out? That's I don't Dude. think any of that's necessary to begin with. But why put a team that is obviously talented on something like that? And and two, I thought that they bought in exile because they saw their next project and they were already really impressed by that it right cyberpunk type game right like yeah they say, like, so how are they how is such on? a small team taking on elder scrolls fallout and now this uh i don't know dude i i said that in my video i was like i don't want an exile working on master man i want them to do what they fucking do best which is make massively you know engaging and immersive rpgs that you know not a lot of people can do like them and and, and obsidian entertainment Almost seem like they just make these big worlds that you're just like enthralled in. <laughs> so don't 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 give them a remaster. Like let them do their thing, man. Let them work on something different. And weren't they the team? Like I correct me if I'm wrong, man. Like two years ago, they hired like the God of War combat director. Like they hired a bunch of people from other studios mm-hmm. that have a lot of experience making massive AAA games. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, I, we I, wanted to get that out there because we want to get all the information out there. But I want the rest of the panel to come alive. I want Tim Dog, Forte, D. Uh, Tim, what are your thoughts on some of this stuff after hearing it all? Just quickly on what was said because I know a lot of panel members have talk. Um, uh, in Exile, yeah, that's all the true. I heard really good things that they've hired a lot of people. Uh, they have a real like for Brian Fargo, the studio leader, and they were definitely given a big project. Whether it's what we're speculating, we have no idea, but they're on some AAA stuff. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm, I'm Forte, down. are you alive? I'm always alive. Not after that bungee argument. No, no. I, it, would take, it, would take, it would take you a lot, you, bro. It would take you a lot to get to me, bro. You already know. That. Take off those uh, Mario cat ears and uh, give us your opinion on yeah, some of these some of these uh, leaks that have come out. No, I mean with the next uh, situation, I do think that a lot of this might be true when it comes to them uh, working on some of this older stuff. But I do think they're going to actually still be in that AAA market when it comes to the stuff that they're going to be making. I do think that they still have, um, they're probably in the process of bringing in multiple people to have those multiple studios to still work on their AAA games when it comes out because they just release one game and it's going to be a while till we see the fruits of that next one. But you got to remember Game Pass is always going to be the fuel that basically Microsoft is pushing. So as many studios as they have they want to get those studios all making a bunch of different games and if they can rehash some of their older stuff to bring that up the code to actually get that into this type of service and stuff that would actually satisfy people because remember they want to get a game out every quarter they're not going to do that with the amount of studios that i mean they could do it with the amount of studios they have right now but they also want to still you know honor the back catalog that they have because they have done a really really good job uh, preserving games for gamers instead of just moving forward completely. I know the new people want the new games. Those new games are coming. Those new experiences will come. But I do think they're going to um, definitely task a lot of these studios to split off to bring some of these older experiences back up the code so we can enjoy those too. Mm. Hey, Pong says something in the chat too. There was uh, some information that apparently came out last year about uh, Bethesda creating a new team to basically do some remasters and stuff like that. It could be an yeah, information exactly. mix-up, he said. It, that's what I'm saying. It was reported that it's in exile doing that stuff, but it doesn't make any sense for an exile to be doing something like this. So maybe Pong is, is right. It could be an information mix-up. But uh, D-Batch, give us your thoughts on some of these leaks. What are you excited for? You got a Star Wars MMO that hopefully is pretty good, and then you got some, some Quake stuff and some Elder Scrolls stuff and some stuff over here and whatnot. Yeah, the Star Wars stuff, man. That's that's pretty exciting. Uh, Quake, oh. man. Uh, man, Quake's a classic, man. And, and uh, on the other stuff, I gotta say, it's it's a it's a marathon. It's a marathon. It's not a race. Yes. And I think they have to be strategic with all of their studios. And remember, Game Pass as a service for it to uh, survive, you always have to have quality content coming in, whether it be new, whether it be something refreshed, something that gamers will enjoy a little bit of something for everybody so i honestly tell you i'm just excited for e3 i really believe that this e3 we're really going to have a better idea of what's cooking what's coming down the pipeline and i've said it many times before once microsoft gets this all rolling it's going to be consistent and we're just going to have games after games after games because those studios are just going to be producing so say you you know I know that they got a lot of studios, but let's just say 20 studios, right? Mm-hmm. You got 10 
that are releasing, you know, games for the next three years. And then after that, you got the other 10 that are releasing games for the next three years after that. And then you got another one that's coming after that or some that are mixed in between. There's going to be a lot of games that are coming that will be coming out once the ball is rolling. And I see the vision. And unfortunately, it's going to take time. And gamers are very impatient. But I think this E3, we're going to get to see some of the stuff that's coming down the pipeline. And I'm just, I'm just excited that Microsoft is really coming hard man they're they're coming hard and us fans we're seeing it we're not like the opposition that's like yeah whatever 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 we're actually seeing what's happening and once we see the fruits of that labor it's going to be a beautiful thing man you know what the most important part of what you just said is you <laughs> know the, the, the you, no i'm not going to do that the, <laughs> i'm definitely not going to do that on this show oh, right now shit. but no the most important thing that i think he that need, people need to take away from what he just said is just the patient side of it because guess what there's a bunch of games that's going to come out. We know what the we know what the roadmap kind of looks like. There's a lot of stuff that's still left up for us to kind of interpret on what they're going to do in the future. But there's going to be surprises that none of us even think of. Like there's going to be something that comes out this year or something that they announced this year that's going to be in the future that's going to blow people away because we always been asking Microsoft, "Hey, you have a huge back catalog of a whole bunch of stuff that we would like to have you bring forward." And to this point, it's all kind of fallen on deaf ears with the exception of a couple of different IPs. There's going to be some new stuff, there's going to be some old stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if we start getting some of that Activision stuff towards the end of this year and they start announcing. I'm not saying they're going to announced this at E3, but I do think that there's going to be a myriad of stuff that people are going to hear and they'll be like, I wasn't thinking of that and that's something that I'm definitely excited for. So just be excited for the things that's coming in the next couple of years because we know the blueprint is on the table and they're going to definitely execute on that over the course of the next year or so. We got to make sure though, we got to clarify, are you telling people to wait for E3? No, I'm telling people to, I'm telling no, I'm telling people to be excited for E3 because you know what? It is their responsibility to excite you. If you are not excited, they did not do a good enough job. You should not temper your freaking expectations. We've all seen what some of these of people that. are excited by no forte. I mean, they saw well, Master Chief's listen. ass in the show and they're like, "Oh, well, no, I love this." Well, well, listen, Master Chief's uh he has a very very nice cakes, man. Very, well, very nice all cakes. All right, somebody you heard it from Forte right here. Motherfucker, we caught him playing Boyfriend Dungeon. Now he's talking about Master God, Chief's butt damn. cheeks. We're, you know listen, what we're going to do? Listen, was, was the last time that man... Let, let me just, let me just say stop, one just thing. Stop, though, <laughs> let me just, before we start going down this cakes shit, let me just say one thing. Let me just say one thing. As the Star Wars MMO, I hope that happens. And I hope that happens. If anyone in the chat's ever played Star Wars Galaxies, that MMO was like early 2000s. It was fucking amazing. I hope we get something like that, man, because I love that game, and I think Star Wars as a universe can be freaking insane. So let's hope right. that happens. I hope they work on something, especially Mandalorian. Like the show literally like makes it easy for devs. Like you upgrade your armor in the show, right. like all this stuff. Like it's like, who's not making a game of this? Like what the fuck? So I'm excited for it. I hope that's true. That's one of the big ones. I hope Dude. it's true, especially like since Ubisoft is working on it too. I'm reading the chat, man. Some of these guys. Fucking master <laughs> chip, master, <laughs> master. Let's chip. go. Let's like, go. Q-Tang, shout out to it. Q-Tang and not MVG and <laughs> Mav and. <laughs> Jonathan R and Darnell Hill and the Grim Knight and so many others, Jose, Yodani, everybody, everybody supported the show. We appreciate you. We kind of all slowly died at the end there. But, uh, hey, we want to thank you for sticking around and listening to the topics. There's 1,300 people tonight. We do appreciate it. Hit the like button if you haven't. And, of course, let us know your thoughts. There's a ton of great things coming. Xbox's big show is uh, it's coming up, man. It's a super exciting time of the year. And this is technically the slow period right it's this is the slowest it's going to get pretty much all year and it's still there's so much stuff in the air right now so much excitement so many possibilities so many studios i don't remember being in a situation like this where i can say all of this at this time period usually it's about this time every year everyone starts freaking the fuck out well they're not showing anything they're not talking about nothing because fucking e3 is right around the corner like but even with all that we're still hearing all this stuff and they have so many teams the future is bright. That's what I'm trying to say. They got one of them HD bulbs in that bitch. It's real bright, and I can't wait to play a lot of this stuff. So let us know your thoughts. Of course, tell a friend about the show, and uh, we appreciate you. We're going to do some outros. And, uh, hey, Forte, thanks for coming on and guesting and all that good stuff and, and rolling with the punches and having fun with us, brother. Where can people find you while you've been playing? 
Yeah, definitely, man. I appreciate the punches you throw because uh, they're nice to catch and throw back at you. You give me but, master, uh, master Cheeks? You punch yourself in the face? Anyway, uh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it's a great show. I've been playing, you know, still been playing Destiny, been playing NBA with you. I, I actually am like a good ways through Elden, um, Elden Ring at this point now, so enjoying Hell that. Yeah. Man, that game is so fire, man. I, I'm glad I didn't pick that game up day one and gave, gave it a break before I actually jumped in because it would have took over my life like it is kind of right now. But uh, yeah, this was a great show, great chat, great, great everything, man. Appreciate the uh, love and support. Uh, find me over at uh, YouTube, Gaming Forte, Twitter, Xbox Live, and PlayStation. Um, DPS Podcast is what we do our show on every Thursday, 9 p.m. We actually have real people there. You know, real people show up in our chat. You know, shout out, shout out to the timeline. Damn, and- relax. Yeah, shout chill out the fuck the- out, man. Shout out, shout yeah. out to the Shout out to uh, Splint Dibberis. Shout out to all of you guys in the chat that be showing up to the show. I appreciate all of you guys. Keep coming, and we will keep supporting you with content. Other than that, you guys have a great week. Enjoy the games you're playing. We will see you next time. Uh, Enjoy yeah, your gaming. Definitely. We got a big shout out to the chat, man. I say it every week, but uh, without you guys, there wouldn't be no shows. And we know what it's like to build a show legitimately and to, to do this the real way and the hard way. And it's not easy, man. It takes a lot of time. And uh, honestly, I, I can't say this enough that this is the best community i i i can't uh, it's, it's i feel like this very obvious like the chat we got here is fucking amazing and i feel like we've seen so many people uh throughout the years and a lot of them are still around so we appreciate you guys hey uh d batch what you been playing buddy and where can people find you i've been playing wwe 2k22 way too freaking much um i'm gonna pick up halo tonight go get into that uh, you can find me on twitter of course at d underscore batch and youtube d batch I got to say, I I know we don't really talk about movies and TV shows here, but Halo was a huge success for Paramount. Apparently, it was their most streamed program, and they're (laughs) not much competition, D Batch. So so it looks like we're going to get uh, a continuation to the season. So it was a smash. They already renewed it before it released. They announced it before it was even released. Oh, okay. It was (laughs) a smash hit. Just just saying. It was a smash hit. It it really was a smash hit. It was a smash hit with no helmet on for four episodes. Yeah, that that guy looked like Colt. Yeah, tell the actor to put his fucking helmet on. Nobody gives a fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I would seal that motherfucker inside that armor and never let him out and have the original voice actor do all the lines. Like, I don't give a fuck. Look what like, you look like, look I don't like give a Colt, fuck. But... I don't give a fuck about any of that. Just kill some shit. He looked like he looked like Colt, but a real man. Oh shit! I'm just saying. <laughs> I just, I just, I just you know, you know, Colt's it. five six. I'm a real boy. You leave his five three ass out of this. Yeah, Chief. stop, stop oh, showing Master Chief's Chief. ass on TV and stuff like these clueless fucks. I don't know, man. It's getting renewed. Hopefully, the they get a new director or something, and they stop showing Master Chief's ass cheeks. But Watch I mean, the show before you say shit. Look, I Colt, just I just Colt don't want to hear Forte you. bragging about butt cheeks again on the show. I don't want to have to brag about butt cheeks, but that's all we've been getting with the exception <laughs> of the last episode. <laughs> He's just walking around. Man. Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, shout out to some different. who's saying some weird shit. He says Zalker should show his his cakes on Twitter and record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Xbox uh, record that. Danny Pasha says, uh, <laughs> he says oh, yeah. how Elder Scrolls Five controller feels on Xbox Series X. I have no idea, sir. Remember that Xbox record that. Uh, hey, and then Lord Starkiller, shout out to you, buddy. He says thanks for being top tier podcast RDX. Time to wa- <laughs> time to <laughs> time to watch Warriors. Hell yeah, bitch! At Grizzlies, yeah. yeah, but, yeah, just yeah got I'm trying to being a bitch. I'm trying to and convince Zucker that there's other good players in the NBA besides Steph Curry. You know, but yeah, Draymond Green, you fucking bitch. Jordan Poole, put some respect on John ja, ja Morant's name. Hey, Barry, right. they Come going on, home, a bitch. They going home in five games, dealer. Sorry to hear it. No, you know what? Uh, it's the Warriors, and it's it's just too easy to root for them. You know, it's just too easy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Home I'm sorry, talent, Lord bitch. Circular. But uh, hey, yeah. Neil. hey uh, Tim Dog, tell people what you've been playing, buddy, and where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter, xCloud Tim Dog. Um, and also, I've been playing Ga- Guardians of the Galaxy. We were uh, hanging out, really enjoying it. It's so good. Um, really cool game. And I didn't dare try the frame. I only went frame rate, and uh, I'm happy that I went <laughs> frame rate. But honestly, yeah, it really is. It's a game you can just jump in and. It's not overly hard. It's just really nice to get into fun commentary, good characters. Uh, just uh, you, like everyone says, uh, it's a good game. Give it a try. It's a game <laughs> Kumar going for the Nick. 
Hey, uh, yeah, follow Tim Dog. He's got a million followers on Twitter. Also, Zachar, buddy, what have you been playing and where can we find you? Uh, you guys can find me on YouTube. Sucking back Clay, you're sucking. <laughs> Twitter, so you're such a fucking bitch boy. Uh, just because your bulls suck. Uh, anyway, moving on. Hey, uh, hey at least no, I'm not Let's go Cavaliers. Uh, Come on now. <laughs> I've been playing a lot so of to, uh, so Apex so Legends. Like uh, I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends, man. Got to plat in like four days. Bitch ass Gaz. Gaz on daily was like, we'll do, you know, ranked. I got to plat in like four days. And then he's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I might join. Uh, so we'll see what's up with that. I've been playing a lot of uh, Valhalla. That game is, I don't know, I'm just having a lot of fun with it, man. It's a lot more lenient than Elden Ring, right? Like in Elden Ring, you always got to pay attention. <laughs> like, you always gotta, right. like a little dog in the corner can whoop your ass. <laughs> oh so God. like, in like, this game, like really, they just come out of nowhere and you're like dead. You're like, what the fuck? Uh, but this game, it's a lot more lenient, a lot more fun, kind of relaxing. So I'm having fun with that. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this game coming to Game Pass this week uh, called Trek to Yomi. That looks freaking awesome, man. I don't know why. It just looks pretty I'm trying cool, to get like, this Japanese motherfucker to play shit that's not in Game Pass chat. Bro, like, fuck. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Game Pass only for me. <laughs> fuck that. No, it's, it's, it looks good. And then Sniper Elite, which is coming to Game Pass. Tell me a game that doesn't, bitch. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that's everything I've been playing. Having a good time. Chat, thanks. Uh, Lethal Papa, you're the fucking man. Awesome moderator. And we love you, bro. Yep, So definitely. Shout out to the mods and, and definitely Lethal. We'll see him around sooner than later. Uh, we've got to give a shout out to you. Donnie says, he says, his Alcris cheeks have um, basically your ass cheeks have eyebrows on them. All right. I'm just going to put that out there. That's your Donnie, not me. Uh, I don't know how he knows, but he knows. They express it. And then shout out to, uh, everybody over there in, in, in Ozzy, Ozzy land. We got a lot of cool Australians, uh, in the chat and I've uh, been getting to know those guys. And I've come to the conclusion that their internet's really trash. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, end the show. Guys, follow me at Dealer underscore Gaming on Twitter. I, I space Dealer space I, I on Xbox Live. That's the best place to get a hold of me. If you want to message me about anything, especially like, uh, you know, obviously if you're a patron, do that on Patreon, right? Uh, that'll be the best place to get a hold of me if you need to get a hold of me. I'll be doing a Discord thing for patrons. I'm, uh, it's almost the 5th uh, now, so we're going to be doing game giveaways after the 5th on for channel members and patrons uh so obviously sign up there if you haven't if you want to support a channel that's going to say what the fuck i i think no matter what i don't care who's around or who's listening uh and oh, obviously we're we yeah i mean that's what we, we got to do we've been doing it for years and again thanks for supporting the show making it what it is guys uh check out my video tomorrow it will be dropping i'll be talking about some forza motorsport 2022 information that i'm hearing and cover some other stuff with the game and obviously guys let us know your thoughts uh, we will see you in the next one. Later, everybody. We're, later. We're out. We're out. We're later. out, Zucker. Oh, oh, oh we're we're later. Hey, I'll we're have out. a smoothie. We're out. I'll have a slurpee. I'll order a slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. The fonts killed me with that shit last week. <laughs>